the trucks? Where's the people? show this year bud we're live streaming oh no well you know what if you got something you want to say to them they're watching right now let's tear them out tonight right here in Joplin, Missouri. We have been fired up for tonight. For us, this is Super Bowl night, and it's like, put us in, coach. So we have had so much fun putting this four-hour flick together. We have been out filming in Nebraska, Indiana, California, Texas, and a whole bunch of filming right here in Joplin. We've had a blast getting out there to see everybody, and it's about to get even better because now the fun begins and we get to share it with you. But before we do, hey, Bryce, come on in here. Hey, a lot of you don't get to see my brother Bryce, but here at Four State Trucks, it kind of boils down to him and I that get the blame for what goes on here. Sometimes when things go really right, <laughs> our crew gets the blame. So that's off to them. But uh, hey, man, it's 2020. And whoever thought we'd be doing a live stream truck show? You know, 2020 has kind of been a year that's more like a bucket of lemons Tell me instead about of lemonade. But tonight, we're focusing on the positive. And man, there's a lot of it. Let's do it. Hey, one thing, any of us spending money on fuel to get to Joplin, Missouri? Hey, there's four or $500 saved. What about motel costs? Another 300 there. Hey, what about that time we spent down here on all of the cleaning, polishing, three days? That's really not as fun as we make out. No lost time, no lost loads. Hey, now you're talking about my pocketbook. The best thing ever though, we've still found a reason to get together and have a party with our friends. g -Bats Live. Absolutely, that's what we're doing tonight. And although we're going virtual, I think there's a stereotype when you hear the word virtual truck show. I am gonna assure you with everything in me, this is a non-typical virtual truck show. This is four hours of high action fresh trucking TV that we have put together just for you tonight. And there's a little bit more of a silver lining. Now, thanks to all of you that are watching tonight and we're glad you tuned in, but guess what? If you're watching tonight, you decide this Sunday you wanna watch it with your dad and your grandpa, Good you man. can do it. Go to YouTube, Facebook, check it out. You decide you wanna watch it three months from now with your drivers, you can do it. Yeah. It'll be out there living forever. 2009, we were sitting here in Joplin, Missouri having our first ever customer appreciation get together and tonight's no different you know it's really because of you everything that you do day in and day out that we can even do something like this tonight thanks for stopping thanks for shopping and we want you to sit back tonight kick back relax and enjoy it because we're going to bring the show to you g Live. <laughs> that's a fact well 
Bryce, I'm going to let you head on because I'm sure there's a fire out there somewhere burning that needs to put out. I think it's the burnout pit. <laughs> I checked there first. <laughs> right on, gang. Well, I know you have got a pretty good idea of what you're going to see tonight, but I'm going to give you a flow, a plan, and agenda for what we got planned for the next four hours. Nobody knows, but when we sat down to cut this thing, we had nearly five hours of footage. So we had to hone out a few things to get down to the very best. We've got six show truck walkarounds. That's right, six show truck walkarounds, and we know that's the reason you're tuning in tonight. We've got two vendor how it's made, where we actually traveled out to Lincoln, Nebraska, and to Clovis, California. We're going to go behind the scenes and show you how some of the cool chrome that we sell at Four State Trucks and some of the cool chrome you buy and put on your trucks was made. Halftime show. Everybody in the social media world in the Midwest USA is talking about the halftime show. Burnouts, baby. <laughs> We've got burnouts going bad in a really good way. We had such an awesome Sunday afternoon filming that with Joe and the gang from Lebanon, Missouri. You're not going to want to miss halftime. Trivia. Trivia like you've never seen before. I've been participating in a lot of trivia in my day, and I've never seen prizes like we've got tonight. Prizes such as a $1,000 cash card, a $1,200 ultra leather seat, a $2,000 set of half fenders with all the brackets, and a four-door cab rack, a four-door cab rack, that is, valued at nearly $5,000. Here's how trivia works. You've got to be watching this on Facebook. I know we're streaming on YouTube, but we've shut comments off, so we're taking answers on Facebook. If you want to participate, view us from there, and here's a clue. Everything is a one-word answer. So for giving us one word ahead of everybody else, you're going to win some of the stuff I was just telling you about. We're going to use Facebook Live Assistant, and she's going to tell us first, down to the split second, who turned in the right answer. Calendar picks. We're going to let you know tonight what 13 lucky truckers photographed themselves and their families and sent them in and came out to be one of the 13 spots on the 2021 Chrome Shop Mafia calendar. Fundraising, our charity Special Olympics, for a lot of years, GBATS has went hand in hand fundraising to help the Special Olympics chapter here in Southwest Missouri. Tonight is no difference. We've had an auction running for a week. It started last Friday, ended today at two o'clock. We're gonna tell you, thanks to a bunch of good sponsor vendors that donated product and a bunch of truckers that bid on it, how much we were able to raise for Special Olympics. And I teased you today, we've had a late breaking development that took place just this week. One local trucking company has stepped up to the plate and agreed to donate $1 to Special Olympics for every viewer we get tonight. So whatever we top out at on viewership during the four hours, this trucking company is going to give a check to uh, Special Olympics. So Scott, buddy, I appreciate you doing this and I hate to do this to you. But everybody watching, share this thing. If you're watching in a party group, all of you turn on your phones and let's get that viewership up and see if we can raise some extra money for Special Olympics. OOIDA is in the house. Uh, they're part of our big $30,000 giveaway that we're gonna draw for at 10 o'clock tonight. That's the highlight, the pinnacle of tonight's uh, broadcast. They've been here all day with their truck on the front lot. Uh, they're in for the 30000 We couldn't do it without them, and we've got something else fun. Let me tell you about one of the trivias we're going to have going. It's sponsored by OOIDA. So, starting now, every time we say in tonight's broadcast, OOIDA or OIDA, you keep count. Keep count until this sign comes back out at some point in tonight's broadcast. At the time you see this sign, tally up how many times we've said OIDA, <laughs> and then uh, send that in on Facebook, and you may win a $1,000 Visa card, thanks to our friends from Grain Valley. So that's your $1,000 trivia prize. We've got GBATS shirts. Where's Gina? Who's got a GBATS shirt on? These just came in this week. These are fresh. GBATS hats. And GBAT shirts. <laughs> these are on sale on our website now. You'll see more about that tonight. Now, you can buy these on our website. We've got all kinds of shirts and hats. And if you go to OOIDA's website, I'm sure they've got a store there and they've got a host of their shirts, hats, 
and things like that as well. So be sure and check them out. We've got Tony Justice is going to debut a new music album, a new music video. He's going to premiere a video tonight, thanks to the people at TBS Factory. And that's going to be a fun watch. We're going to have a party photo competition. <laughs> this was a suggestion somebody came up, and i got to tell you, I really like it. If you're partying in a group tonight, watching GBAT's live stream, get a picture of your peeps during the party, and we're going to pick the most fun-loving, rowdy party bunch, and we've got a prize package for each one of you that I'm going to tell you about later tonight. We've got sales, sales, sales. I know after doing 10 years at GBATS, a lot of you make your whole shopping list for the year and you buy it on GBATS weekends because the sales are significant. Well, it's no exception this year. We've had 12% off site-wide today. We're going to have 12% off site-wide tomorrow and we're going to have 12% off site-wide all day Sunday. But we're going to blow the socks off of that about halfway through this broadcast. So more information coming to you on some incredibly huge sales. Here's something that you all may not know about. We've got a blooper reel. We are, uh, we are slightly less than perfect at filming and uh, recording, so we've got a blooper reel. I've watched it 20 times, and I still break out laughing every time I watch it. That's going to be towards the tail end of tonight's broadcast. So enough of me standing up here blabbing. Is everybody ready to get this four-hour truck and TV started? Well, I am. Let's go, because we've got less than four hours. Hey, hey. Old, my old buddy Dave, what's happening? I tell you what, just to keep my uh, archaic internet connection at home uh, from causing problems, I'm staying at my office right now just to watch this great event. So <laughs> this is so much fun, man. I love it. I love it. What a great idea. Since we can't be together, we're doing it this way, and that's cool. You know? One thing's for sure. We've all become a little more savvy at live streaming the last six uh -huh. months than we were a year ago. So, hey, that's right. not too bad. I mean, we've had some good truck and TV so far tonight. We're learning new skills every day, buddy. But, it, you know, I want to just say, though, that it is history in the making right now. We're doing something different we've never done before. But if we think all the way back to a time before we even had smartphones, mm -hmm. we had our very first truck show down there that was more just kind of like a kind of a fun appreciation deal many, many, many eons ago, right? And look at where this thing's come to. So, in my opinion, I know taking a break this year, unfortunately, stinks, but... I always look at this, you know, I, I've been around so long down there. I think people told me I, I should either move there or I should take a break for a year anyway. So this is cool. We're going to come back next year. I am going to be uh, hopefully welcome back again. And we're even going to be more excited to see each other next year after a year off. I mean, that's my opinion. So get ready for some bro hugs, dude, because I'm coming in hot next year. <laughs> right on. Well, yeah. uh, you're definitely family in our book. And, uh, this year's been awesome. This GBAT's little live stream. I mean, a lot oh, of yeah. fun, cool stuff that otherwise we never would have done uh, That's right. on this platform That's and right. this method. We've had fun putting it together, but we are definitely looking forward to next September and getting That's 800 right. or 1,000 of our buddies down here with their trucks and having a party. <laughs> it's going to be great, man, and my kids are looking forward to it now. This is a family event. Uh, it's just it's crazy. So it gives me something to look forward to next year already, which, you know, in my days, sometimes it's hard to find something great to look forward to. But I always got G-Bats, and next year it's going to be bigger and badder and better than ever. So get ready, folks. I'll be rolling in down to Jomo before you know it. All right, Dave. Well, thanks for uh, checking in with us. Tell everybody hi, and we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely, Tim Four. GBATS 2020 is here. We're down in Neosho, Missouri with our good friend Scott Wade and the guys and gals here at CEI. We're doing something different for Special Olympics. Since we can't get together, in Joplin, you know, eight or 10,000 of us like we like to. This year, Scott and the team here at CEI has agreed to do something really special. For every viewer we get tonight, whatever we top out at, they're gonna donate $1 directly to Special Olympics. Now, I know Scott, Brandon, you and the whole crew, you're always good to come up there to GBATS. You're participating in the convoy auction. You bring up seven or eight owner operators and company trucks. We've got our CEI village up there. This year was a way to step out and do something really fun and different. Well, I'll tell you what, Brian, you, you always figure out a way <laughs> to continue to make it better, even when we have to go non-live with an event. And I couldn't be more grateful to be a part of it this year and to be able to still participate in Special Olympics, something we're very passionate about. So 
be sure and share this with your friends. We do. We want to write that big check for Special Olympics, and I know you guys do too. Thank you for letting us be a part of this, Brian. Share this. Let's get those viewers up, and uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Crystal, thanks for bringing to it. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, we're not in Caldwell, Texas, the hometown of Mr. Truett here, but we are in Texas. And uh, we've got behind us his Doc Holiday truck, the most recent build for Equipment Express. And Truett's been teasing me for the last many months, sending me pictures, just little clips where I can't quite see the whole thing because he was going to debut this up at GBATS 2020 in Joplin. But since we had to postponed the show for a year. I guess it's still technically being debuted at GBATS. We're just doing it on a live stream. So tell me a little bit about how you got started. You know, if you're like me, my granddad runs some trucks. My uncle was a diesel mechanic. My other uncle and dad had truck stops and tankers and whatnot. So I'm betting you kind of grew up all along wanting to end up in trucking if you're oh, yeah. like me. So go uh, take me back to when we were young. Yes, sir. My dad had trucks. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a, called Hot Oil Plus. Mm -hmm. It was a oil field service company. It was mm -hmm. more of just straight trucks, but we serviced oil wheels in Texas. Obviously, it's a big mm -hmm. thing. And every afternoon, they would come in. I had to park every one of them. Yep. I had to grease them all just so my mom would get very aggravated. I would ruin every clothes. I had a new <laughs> pair of clothes every day because I ruined the ones from the day before from grease and just hanging around trucks, crawling all over them, just living everything I could about them. Oh, I'm telling you. My uncle drove trucks forever. Uh, he would run the California. He did the West Coast Shuffle with the uh, produce, and every Christmas break I would ride with him mm -hmm. out there and kind of got just to eat up with it. One summer, or not summer, one Christmas, my uncle got sick out in California, uh -huh. and I was in the third grade, and I had to be back for school. And so <laughs> he goes, "You've been driving them all in the yard. It's your turn to get on the road." So I drove it on the road when I was in the third grade, no all way. the way back to Fort Stockton. <laughs> That'd be something to My see. Now, this day and age, you would never let your third grader do that. <laughs> you know, in this liability world. But man, back then, back it was then, just it different. was no. That's right. It was this was in the 80s. It wasn't yeah. no big deal. And uh, I drove all the way to Fort Stockton. My parents picked me up, and I come in there, and they were like, "I cannot believe your uncle is letting you drive that truck." <laughs> From then on, it's been nothing but trucks for me. Uh, like I said, we started oil field service company. My dad still does that type of business. Uh, it's mm -hmm. more of a construction now. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got into the hauling and heavy equipment. He had the equipment, and mm -hmm. uh, so we started moving him around. Well, fast forward into today, Equipment Express. I mean, I kind of know the gist of what you guys do down there, but for those of us that may not know, uh, kind of what's the products and services, and what's a typical work week look like for you guys and your fleet? So what we do is we primarily move, we call it yellow iron, construction type equipment, but mm -hmm. it's mostly we chase what they call the pipeline industry. Mm -hmm. But side booms, excavators, and dozers is primarily what we haul probably 70%. Let's talk about the truck behind us, affectionately named Doc Holiday, And uh, we're going to see a lot of references to the uh, tombstone uh, flick. Why don't we go over here and we'll start with a walk around on the truck. What do you say? Sounds good. You know, the very name of the truck, Doc Holliday, the movie Tombstone, no matter how many times you've seen that movie and no matter when you get in on it, you're going to watch that thing to the end every time. We already went over it, but every town has a story, but Tombstone has a legend. Forgive me if I don't shake hands. Go ahead, skin that smoke wagon, see what happens. Well, I got a lot of friends. I don't. The law don't go good around here, savvy. There's no normal life, there's just life, so get on with it. Well, you're a daisy if you do. Remember? Play for blood? Well, I've not yet begun to defile myself. I'm your huckleberry. Well, bye. <laughs>
the quotes never stop. And you're going to see that on the walk around here. So the truck I can see is a legacy 07 model. Those were numbered, weren't they? Yes, sir. What's this one? This one is 736. 736. Now, 1, how did this truck come about to end up in your fleet? This truck come from a buddy of mine. Uh, he, he knows how to look for legacies. I, 07 is my favorite year of Peter uh -huh. Bills. I have uh -huh. most of my fleet are 07s. I probably got uh, about 18 of them that are 07s. Uh, we just 07 is the last year of 379, so that's the reason that I like them. I'm not a 389 fan. Right on. Now, when you got it, I'm sure it was down to pretty much bare rails. Tell us a little bit about the the refurb, the renovation, if you will. So how, the, how far did you go down? So the truck was originally black. Uh huh. Factory wheelbase, 300 wheelbase, double frame front to back. Okay. Now we took it all the way down to just frame rails. Mm -hmm. Did you replace the rails or just refurbish The frame it? rails are original. Okay. So they still have the serial number stamped in them. Mm -hmm. But all of the axles have been changed, all of the brakes. So this is a 389 front axle factory mm -hmm. air ride. Mm -hmm. uh, the rears are factory 389 air ride axles. They're super 40s. Mm -hmm. They got disc brakes front to back, mm -hmm. just like a new truck would have. Mm -hmm. Behind the motor, we got two transmissions. We got a 2918 transmission. Mm -hmm. And we got a 1750 four-speed auxiliary. Mm -hmm. We got 411 gears that are the direct gears, which you got two, two lower in a four-speed, and then you got one overdrive. Mm -hmm. Are all your trucks some shade of blue? All of them but one. All of them, and what's it? Sore thumb, it's white. Ha, <laughs> gotcha. Well, the color combination, the old school stripe package is good. That's gotta be a double eagle sleeper, doesn't it? That is, this is a double eagle sleeper, came off of, a, it's like an 84. Mm -hmm. uh, came off and we totally redone it. It was all new skins, mm -hmm. all new interior. Mm -hmm. We added a little old school van windows to it. It is original OEM parts. Mm -hmm. These were leftovers from whenever Double Eagle went out and we bought some parts from them. I see. And then to complement that, you went with the small bow tie. Yes, sir. Go, it just shouts 80s model, Double Eagle, old school cool. I mean, it really come together nice. The painted air cleaners, painted tanks, so Nicely done. I like a lot of the old school, but I like all the new features, the new mm -hmm. amenities. Mm -hmm. I like the air ride. I like the unibuilt in them. I like the bigger mirrors, mm -hmm. but we do try to still keep a lot of the old school that was cool, like the paint stripe, mm -hmm. the old school looking sleeper, just more square and boxy, but not too much 350. I don't want it to look like a 359 if people, a lot of people would. Right. That's not what we're going for, but some of the, just the features that we like mm -hmm. from the old school, but with all the new amenities. Mm -hmm. That's what the reason we went with disc brakes, but it's still got an old truck. New front end, new motor, uh, new front axle underneath the 389 air ride. That's the it's an 07 on title only. On really, title you've only. replaced and updated all the running gear. Yes, sir. I dig the way you kept uh, kept the theme going. Four tank straps, four air tank straps. Yes, uh, that worked out real nice. Tell me why the selection on the uh, I call them tanker lights, but instead of doing like watermelon cab light lenses or or the rubber mounts what made you go with so the uh we did these lights it kind of goes with the theme of the truck they're kind of a flat bill like doc holiday's hat ah. so they're a flat bill if you look at the flanges on them it's a flat bill kind of looks like a top hat from the movie right on right on eight inch pipes uh we went with the old school turnouts mm -hmm. uh most of the trucks that we run do have miter cuts but just trying to change them up a little bit let's head on check out the part of the truck that does the heavy lifting back here. A lot of custom uh, sheet metal work down the deck plate. Uh, we like to enclose all of the deck plates to keep everything clean and simple. I don't like a lot of dirt. That way you, it is gonna get dirty, but you do not see it. It just kind of keeps mm -hmm. a good, sleek, clean type look. WTI fenders? WTI fenders with the small lip. Uh, it's on low air leaf suspension with Super 40 rears. Which Super 40 is entitled 46 axles and gears, mm -hmm. but the suspension is only rated for 40, so they call it Super 40s. Mm -hmm. One thing about these fenders, we call them single humps or uh, full radius. They look so good when they're on, but now you talk about some time. It takes some time to lay those out like you did and get the brackets right to where everything is nice, level, and symmetrical. Some people don't realize how tough it is to do a good job putting those things it, on, and you guys did it. It's probably close to 40 hours of, of labor by the time you start to the time you finish, mocking everything up, putting them together, mount them to make sure they're good, get them all the same height. If you notice, they're all the same height at the bottom, yes. they're all the same height at the top. Yep. Yep. And, you, and to do that, it takes time. You see more trucks with them not mounted just right than you do right, I that can assure true. you. Yeah, they're, they're aligned, I guess you'd call it vertically and horizontally, yep. they're perfect. Yep. I'm seeing attention to detail. You guys finished all your welds, ground them down, body worked them, uh, custom T-bar on the back that's actually molded 
end of the yeah, frame. This here is for our trailers. This is what they call the, the stiff arm that holds the trailer up. The, mm -hmm. the, when you detach the neck, that holds it up. We put the neoprene pad here to keep from scratching the back of it. Mm -hmm. But this plate is actually three quarter inch plate mm -hmm. that is molded into that and fabricated into that. And we went with the same with all of the lug top nut hats. covers, top hats to kind of go with the theme. Mm -hmm. We got some sayings on the back. We got a <laughs> little hat painted in the back here for Doc. It's just a little emblem of it. Say when. Say when. My hypocrisy only goes so far. Just a few things to follow up with Doc. Most of our trailers have the, a lot of people refer to them as the California hookups, uh -huh. but it just keeps everything off the top. Uh, instead of scratching your deck plate, it all, it kind of just hangs here in the back where it's out of the way. That's not aluminum, is it? No, sir. That's steel. That's three quarter inch plate. <laughs> we, don't, we don't work with a lot of steel up there in Missouri for T-bumpers. <laughs> that is so, a push block if you need it to be. I see, yeah, there may be a dozer blade against it someday. That's right. Hopefully it's not in, in, the, in the near future. Hopefully nice. that's 10 years down the road. There you go. Yeah. Uh, the pleated back wall on the uh, Double Eagle was an old signature mark that always uh, added a real nice finished look. I like that. We added the back window. Most of them didn't come with it, but mm -hmm. my guys prefer the back window, and mm -hmm. every truck I have in the fleet has one, so mm -hmm. we couldn't go without mm -hmm. the back window, and it mm -hmm. just... What about the uh, the boomerang antenna? Did you find an old school truck stop that had that like way in the back on the top shelf? Yeah, no, that come from in the same place. The, I call them van windows in the side come from. Found them in a square body 70 model van yep. junkyard. <laughs> Those were pretty big back in the day. Yeah, that kind of gives it. That was one of my first pieces I bought to put on there. Well, you've kind of got me intrigued with that. You said it's a C17 cat. Yes, sir. Not a C15, not a C16, not a C18. You gotta crack me with something different. A C17. Let's get this hood up and you can tell me more. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's pretty much stock under here. They really haven't done a lot yet. <laughs> Man, this looks phenomenal. We gotta get to the motor last. That's the, that's the most expensive part. C17, tell me again slow. What makes this different? So this factory was a C15 Acer. Yep. Okay. What makes it to a 17 liter just mm -hmm. by the, it is taking the pistons and liners from a C18 mm -hmm. and modifying the rods mm -hmm. that will attach to the C15 crank. Mm -hmm. And there's a little more to it, obviously, with the tune on the ECM, yeah. but that's yeah. the heart of it. Yeah. Uh, so it's still the same crank on mm -hmm. the C15, but you change the jugs and the pistons. Mm -hmm. Now, with it being a recent build, you probably haven't put it on a dyno yet, and maybe you never will, but if, best guess, what kind of horsepower? Around 800 horse. 800 horse. Man, she'll do the job, yes, especially sir. with that tranny set up. And those low gear rear ends. With the gears and the tranny, it should yeah. do, do yep. fine. Yep. Well, you can see full attention to detail here. Painted uh, intake pipes, chromed out uh, coolant pipes. Uh, everything's polished and plated uh, where it needs to be. Well done under here. Look at uh, <laughs> the tombstone references. Uh, just keep going and going. Law dogs. Is this play for blood? Right here, play, play for, for blood. blood. Yes, sir. And then you got some cowboy Doc Holiday silhouettes back and there. And up here on the hood is where we got the, one of the most famous ones from it, where Tombstone, the movie where it says, every town has a story, but Tombstone has a legend. <laughs> that is awesome. We got the hand painted pinstripe, pinstripe and yep. got guns incorporated into yep. it. There again, it kind of revolvers, brings Just, that 80s theme in with the yeah. hand, hand laid uh, pinstripes. You know, most trucks are a 12,000 pound front. What, is this a 16? This is a 18,000 pound 18. front. Yes, I haven't sir. got anything right today. <laughs> go, right, 20 is most common on the most big ones, but yeah. the 20s, we've got to have too yeah. many springs. They get too, they ride a little rough. Gotcha. 300 inch wheelbase truck, we have a hard time putting more than that mm -hmm. up there, so we just don't, don't right. go that route. I see you put a, a airlift bumper flip kit on it so you can navigate through those job sites yes, where they sir. want you to go. Gives you a little bit more ground clearance. For yeah. Dipping in a hole, getting off road. Well, I don't want to miss out. Let's check out the other side of the engine. Got a polished out uh, coolant reservoir up here. Yeah, we polished out the, the turbo intakes here. The same mm -hmm. thing, still the twin ACERT turbos. Mm -hmm. uh, we got down here some more of the sayings where it says, law don't go around here and on the <laughs> old pan. We got a revolver down there, six shooter says, I have two guns, one's for each of you. <laughs> That's what Doc's famous one whenever Ringo tells him he's seeing double. <laughs> Well, we've walked around it rather quickly. I think it's about time to check out the interior. I know all of you online are dying to see that. Crystal, how about you give us a tour of the inside? I'm sure you had a hand in the design. Crystal, I can't believe it was the first thing I noticed when I pulled up, and we haven't talked about it yet, the blue tent. Yes. Not smoke, but blue. Blue tent. <laughs> yep, you're absolutely right about that. I'm not 
I'm not quite sure if that's uh, DOT friendly or not. But it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's so Couldn't funny. go better with the truck. Aluminum floor painted to match. As you can see, we're barefoot in here, so we're not scratching. We're yep. being respectful, keeping it looking new. Yep. Uh, painted dash, trimmed out with all the chrome. He talked about the 18-speed with the 4-speed auxiliary. Attention to detail, Doc Holiday. Doc Holiday, <laughs> the name of the truck. We got wagon mule on the truck and trailer val sure. air valves there. Here's an 80s reference, the anti-glare lights. Yeah. You know, back in the day, everybody had a pair of these $4 lights that right. uh, is supposed to keep the glare down. I don't know if they actually do that or not, but uh, they are pretty cool. Know. And then I don't know if you noticed or not, but we went ahead with the interior, so everything kind of ties together. We use mm -hmm. the same top, the tanker top hat yeah. lights. Yeah, yeah on the inside as we did the outside. Yep. Um, the Peterbilt oval on the front, Equipment Express, we came through mm -hmm. in the truck and all where it would say Peterbilt the oval, we mm -hmm. tied the Equipment Express in. Mm -hmm. um, stainless steel seat bases, went around with the chrome, around the shifters. Man, this is finished out really nicely. Man, it's just clean, it's not overdone. Yep. Uh, the choice to go with a diamond tuck interior really worked well on this truck. I uh, like the way that came together. You got the nice rockwood uh, chrome plated handles here. Uh, brought the two tone blue inside, inside yep. uh, from the outside. And I mean, it's all the way around. The button tuck works well back here, too. Got a blue light in the back uh, sleeper glass. Yeah, and then blue light also. The uh, windows in the side of the bunk, those will illuminate in blue at night as well. Yeah. Even the new seats were recovered to match the uh, new upholstery. Yeah, and there's some pretty comfortable seats. Authentic horn. That's not your three bell, ninety dollar made in China horn version. In case you're wondering. <laughs> no, in fact, I think that this might have come from your uh, sale you had not too long ago. Right, right. And I seen you even have the authentic valve. Like you don't have the right. chrome China valve. You got no, the the real locomotive deal. Yep. 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 I dig it. Yep. I dig it. Here we go. You know the legacy number seven thirty six, like true it said of one thousand. Yep. They only made these in 07 and they were kind of an anniversary edition. So they're a high, highly sought after, highly valued truck, the Legacy Series in general. All right, cool stuff. Thanks, Crystal. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks for the tour of Doc Holiday. But tell me, back at the shop down there in Caldwell, should we be expecting any other cool projects coming out, say, over the next six months or a year? Well, I'd like to be six months, but it's more <laughs> probably like a year. Uh, we do got one you asked earlier about of all the trucks. They were all blue. Mm -hmm. We got a teaser coming up that's not blue. Mm -hmm. And ironically, we named it Troublemaker. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a shade of blue, mm -hmm. but it's not blue. Well, I know everything you guys turn out is, uh, is head turning, that's for sure. So you guys definitely got an eye for design and a, uh, and a reputation for quality. Along those lines, like uh, Truett, if you had a kid come up to you, say he's 26 years old and he's going to He's got his truck, he's gonna get his start in heavy hauling. What would be your best advice for success to this young lad? Or gal, could be a gal. There you go, yeah. could be. Yeah. What, what we built our business on is customer service and quality. Price don't mean nothing. You can be the cheapest guy in town and they ain't gonna use you very long if you don't have customer service. Or you can be the highest guy in town and they only have to use you once to get in there if you got the customer service to take care of your customers. So I'd say utmost that's the number one goal is customer service and do what you say you're going to do. If it costs you money, it costs you money. You can't go back on your word. If you tell the man $100 and it costs you $300, you might not do it very often, but you need to do it that time you tell him that. You learn from what you, your mistakes and you go about and do it that way. That's good advice. You yep. know, we've had some yep. long-lasting customers from the very first year we started. I still mm -hmm. got the same one. He's still my number one customer. Well, I've enjoyed this time down here in Texas with Crystal and Truett. I hope you have too. Thanks for the tour. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule Absolutely. to set aside an afternoon to make some TV magic. Oh. So, Absolutely. I appreciate it. It's always good to get together. I wish we didn't live so far apart, uh, but we appreciate you guys. I know you're real good to call Josh about every three or four weeks and, and order up a few parts and we ship them down to you. The only thing that would be better is if you called him every three or four days. I hear that. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed, Doc. But, uh, yeah, blue is still our number one color, even though Troublemaker is not blue. Gotcha. All right. Well, appreciate it. Y'all yes, have a safe trip Thank home. Thank you, sir. And we'll see you next time. All right. Good seeing you.
All right, I just would like to say thanks to everybody who helped with this and helped with Equipment Express. Uh, first and foremost, my parents, Tommy and Pat Novosad. Uh, my wife, Crystal, keeps this going. And uh, the guys that make the world go around when we're away doing these things. Uh, all my drivers, mechanics, ladies in the office. Y'all are the real heroes behind the scene that keep us going. Just want to tell y'all thank you. And uh, keep doing the good work y'all do. And we'll keep the trucks looking like they look. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mom. And I'm Sarah Martin. Boy, are you guys enjoying the show this year? I bet you are. I bet you've seen a lot of great trucks. But I sure do miss going around and yeah. seeing everybody this year and welcoming everybody here. But yeah. I know you're all having a good time. Yep. Did you know that we're giving away $30,000? <gasps> $30,000? $30,000 oh, to my. one of you. Or they said it might be you. I bet it's him. No, it's going to be him over there. Sitting in that, oh, that pretty truck over there. That's who it's going to be. That's going to be. It's going to be. Oh, my. You guys keep watching. We're sure glad you're here tonight. And we oh, are going to see. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. I wonder if Troy's going to be in his Flintstone costume. I bet he is. I bet he's home what, sitting on his couch watching. Right with now. With his Flintstone. In his Flintstone costume. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, yes. We're so glad you all joined us in your beautiful trucks and we'll see you next year we'll see you all next year for the biggest and the bestest show ever don't thanks, you guys. think yes thanks see y'all later bye Hey folks, we finally made it out here to Clovis, California. We're at Valley Chrome Plating, and I gotta tell you, man, I am fired up. We've been selling their product, uh, selling bumpers for them for over 30 years. And guess what? I'm seeing this today for the first time. I've never been here. Now, four state trucks, we've sold, I can't begin to tell you how many Valley Chrome bumpers and Valley Chrome products. I've probably personally sold several thousand. They are kind of the go-to. Uh, for most of you out there watching, they are who you go to for a, a chrome front bumper, a rear T-bar, stuff like that. It's a family-owned business. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Let's go in here and catch up with Ray and Matthew. They know we're coming. Hey, hey guys. Brian. Hey, Brian. Matthew, Matthew Ray. Ray. The elusive Brian Martin. Boy, we've never seen you around here I'm before. I'm fired up to be here. Welcome now, to it's been. 25, 30 years of working together, selling Valley Chrome bumpers and whatnot, and it's our first time out here. So we want to do this like a how it's made. You know, so many of our guys, they buy these bumpers, you know, every three or four years, and they're proud to wear them. But can we get a behind the scenes look, like from start to finish? How does a chrome front bumper come into existence? Absolutely, you know, you threw this idea to us a few weeks ago, and we thought it was a great idea. You know, you've done a heck of a job for us over a lot of years of selling our product. And we appreciate it. We're happy to do that for you today. If a guy wants that one-off custom bumper, wants a certain light cut, wants his name cut in it, Valley was the place to call. And that holds true today. And, you know, that's how we basically built our reputation was not building the bumpers that everybody else could build, but building mm -hmm. the wider ones, building the American Eagles, you mm -hmm. know, building the ones uh, with different cuts and different mm -hmm. light holes. So it's been a challenge, but, you know, that's what we want to be known for is mm -hmm. the custom bumpers. We make a regular, a lot of the regular ones, mm -hmm. but still the custom one is our niche. Oh, for and, sure. And we tell our guys out in the plan, if you're not going to put that on your own truck, don't send it out. There you go. That's what keeps them coming back. Yeah. Well, there's a lot going on today. Where are we going to start this tour? Are we going this way or this way? Let's go that way and check out the manufacturing. Come on. So, Valley Chrome's been here a long time. If I remember right, started back in the 60s, didn't you? It did. My dad was a steel worker uh, in Gary, Indiana in 1961 and got tired of it 
and loaded all the kids up in a station wagon and took Route 66 out to California uh -huh. and bought a third of Valley Chrome plating for $12,000. So on. that's how he started. Neat story. The other thing is, you know, Ray's the eldest of eight kids. I'm the youngest. Uh -huh. And at some point, all eight of us have cycled through. Six of us landed and are still here running the company. Uh -huh. And we've all got our different aspects of the company that we run. So it really makes for a good team. Yeah. Working with family isn't always easy. And that was in 61. That was in 61. Here we are today. A lot of things have changed. Uh, a lot of growth. You started out in the the automotive, like car bumpers, didn't you? Yes, my dad was basically the company salesman, and he would ride around all the body shops uh -huh. to see all his buddies, and he'd pick uh -huh. up car bumpers that got wrecked, and we would straighten and chrome them. Yeah. And that's what we did. You know, we started early uh, in the early, late '60s, about 1967, uh -huh. building our first. A uh, chrome truck bumper, a trucker came in with a Kenworth that had an 8 inch bumper on it uh -huh. and he wanted a 16 inch. So my dad said, you know, I think we can do that. So we went and got a piece of steel and had a local company bend it for us. Yes. Then we polished it by hand and chromed it and that's how we started out. Talk about just changing times. You're talking about late 60s, early 70s. You took an 8 inch and the guy wanted a 16. Exactly. Now they've got a 16 and they want a 20 or a 22 or a 19 tapered up to 21, vice versa. Uh, a lot of stuff has changed. You know, unless you sat around and really dwell on it, in the 70s and 80s, there wasn't really a lot of truck customizing. I mean, if you had a big bumper, some extra chicken lights, and uh, maybe a set of top stacks, you had a custom truck back then. Yeah, you know, back then, an 18-inch rolled-in was a custom bumper. From 61, when your dad started out to today, what's a couple of the milestones for the company? Uh, one of the guys that worked for us eventually went and started Western Wheel, and uh -huh. that took off. You know how big uh -huh. that got. You know, today I talked about making three and five and seven bumpers. Uh, today we're b building between 250 and 300 bumpers, so and we're trying to go up right now. So it's gotten quite a bit bigger over the years. That's impressive. And we recently built our millionth bumper. Uh -huh. so oh that wow! Was the beginning did of you this have year, a little celebration so. photo op? We did. Yeah, well, we were going to do that at Louisville. And yeah, one millionth. Wow, yeah. what a milestone! Obviously, we want to do the how it's made on a bumper, and clearly, it's all going to start out as either a flat sheet of steel like we got here, or in some cases, a sheet of stainless steel. So. Pick us up from this point, right? Alrighty, so we're bringing in about a million pounds of sheet steel a month. You can see it's stacked up right here. So what we do with this is we load it into this tower according to what size it is, goes on each shelf. So they'll load this thing up and then this shuttle will take it to our two lasers over here, which will then cut the outside shape of the bumper into it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to walk over past this shuttle station and look at these lasers and see how the bumpers are actually cut out. Sounds like a plan. We're here at our fiber laser, so the shuttle station will bring the sheet steel over and place it in the laser. So then you can see the program up here on the screen. It'll tell it what outside shape to cut, and it'll cut you know, different shapes on the same sheet of steel or maybe the same one. It all depends on what our production schedule is for the day. But you can actually load that shuttle station up, and it'll run all weekend if you can get it full of enough steel. So it, it's really helped us out on our production. Good point. You're not just running these things eight to five. Right now, you're running full three shifts. We are. We're running 24 hours a day. You guys need bumpers? They're making them. <laughs> 24 hours a day, darn near. Okay, right here is the steel after it's been cut on the laser. It'll shuttle it out down here. It'll automatically run it over here. So we're looking at the pallets of steel after they've been cut and pulled off the machine. They're set here, and then the employees behind us will break all the bumpers and the brackets out of the steel and sort it so we can do what we're going to do next to it. In the case of the bumpers, it's polish them. In the case of the brackets, we're going to actually bend them. Behind us, I see your recycle, recyclable yeah. skeleton. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to all go to a smelter and get some recycle money back. There you go. Uh, we try and reuse everything we can. Mm -hmm. We're here at the start of the polishing operation with our favorite employee. Rory the robot, and he's never missed a day of work yet, but he'll actually pick up the bumpers right here, put them on the conveyor, and from there they'll roll into the polishing equipment. So I find it kind of interesting. In my mind, I had always thought you would cut, form, and bend the bumper, then polish it, but you're actually going to polish it in a flat state. Yes, we do that uh, nowadays. In the old days, we did it exactly the way you said. Yeah. But we're here at the polishing station. After the conveyor runs them through this machine, 
They'll come out on the other end polished, but it goes through six heads. So let me get that right. It's gonna go through once, come back, go through again, come back and go through again, each time getting a little bit finer on exactly. the polish. It's actually going through three times. That takes so. a while. So as the parts come out at the end of the line, we'll actually uh, take a reading of the polishing finish okay. with a, a tool that we use that tells us if the finish is good enough to be plated. So in the old days when we polished out here as teenagers, it at. was all visual. You yeah. would, you'd get to know what a good finish looks like. Uh -huh. Now we get to employ a little bit of science to help us so we yeah. can ensure that we're being as efficient as we can. When that part goes to plating, it's ready to get that chrome put on it. Perfect, that's impressive. So right here you see our hand form press line. So they're in the process of making a box end bumper. The ones that we can't press in one stamp will all come over here and get bent. So we can do various widths, various uh, formations on them, tapered, square, whatever you want. All right, so we're here at our 400 ton press. Uh, we have the tooling in it right now to press out a 02 or a 16 inch tapered bumper. And that's what they're doing in the background. Obviously, you you guys have to make custom tooling for every bumper configuration you got. Uh, what are they doing? 16 inch tapered ones that's here. That's a 16 inch tapered. Yes. Yeah. And then you change out the tool. Yes, you can do an 18 to... inch box stand and so on. Yeah. And so forth. So we're here at our Mazak laser. After the bumper's been polished and formed, then it'll come back over here and get the bolt holes, light holes, hitch holes, whatever hole it needs cut in it in the face. So we're basically done with the finish on the top of it. So we're going to cut the, the stuff in it that we couldn't do before. So every Valley Chrome bumper has a serial number that's more or less engraved on the bottom of it. It's also at this station. They're going to put the tag right dead center on the bottom flange of the bumper so everything matches up here. Right, And that's also an RFID tag. So as it goes through the shop, we can figure out where it is. I did not know that. Yeah, that's yeah, part of the traceability. You can find it at any station. Where like things that. hanging down, that's an RFID. So these are radio frequency. You can actually track it when it's under your roof. Correct. And when they go into the Amazing. plating solution, it doesn't kill them, yeah. So, yeah. which is another big thing. I had no idea. So after the bumpers are cut out on the laser, they'll go down these rollers. And you see a welding station behind us. And we've got three or four welding stations. And the guys will pull them off the rollers. And they'll weld the bumpers up and grind them and get them ready to go down to the top lip polishing, which is going to be the next station. So that's a 24 inch wide bumper, uh, which is definitely on the custom side. He's also selected the amount of light holes that he wants in it. So we call that bumper an as per, as per the customer wants it. Yeah. So every custom bumper comes through with a traveler down the line. You know, I love to see 24 inch bumpers because that means I'm going to sell this guy about three or four bumpers a year. I don't care who you are, you cannot drive long without bending yeah. this thing. That that's is, the truth. That is minimal ground clearance. Yeah. yeah. But it does look cool. It does look good. It's a conversation piece for that old boy. For sure. <laughs> or, in some cases, maybe it's just a show bumper. Good stuff. Okay, so we're here at the top lip station. Uh, when they form it and when they weld it, they'll put some scratches or dents or dings or whatever in the top lip of the bumper. So that's all got to come out. So that's what this does, it polishes it all out. So we're here at the checkoff station. He's wiping the bumper down and inspecting it for scratches, dings, dents, pits, whatever blem will show up after the plating. You know, this polishing is like a paint job. The better it is before you paint it, or in this case, plate it, the better it's gonna look afterwards. So the bumper he's wiping down right now is one of the blind mounts you talked about. There's no holes in the face of it. Right. Uh, so we came up with a way of doing that a few years back. Ray, I got a question for you. I want to tell you what I think, and you tell me if I'm all wet. On the back of these bumpers, this plate right here. I've always kind of called that a, a backsplash plate, but does it have a purpose other than to keep snow and ice a piling it up does. in here? If you hit something with that truck, this plate keeps the bumper from tying the tire up. So it'll hit that safety plate and it'll keep rolling. Otherwise, it would lock that uh, right here. wheel up oh, and it yeah. would, it oh, would, yeah. you wouldn't have any steering. So, you know, a lot of OEM accounts, they require a certain size safety plate and weld it in a certain way. So, yes, that is a safety function right there. Yeah. So there you go. Free factoid from four state trucks. 
When somebody that's unfamiliar with the industry asks me about valley chrome plating and I explain what you all do, then I tell them you're located in California, their reaction's always the same. They're plating in California, and what we're looking at here is a big commitment to what you guys do for the environment in your business. Yeah, we actually started out about 25 years ago going in a direction to where we would put nothing down the drain. Mm -hmm. That's called zero discharge, and we've mm -hmm. done that. When we started doing it, we had to build the systems ourselves because nobody was exist. making it. Yeah. Now you can buy them turnkey, mm -hmm. but we put nothing down the drain and we landfill nothing. Everything is either incinerated or recycled. Well, let's see uh, how these bumpers get uh, plated and shiny once again. Sounds good. So we're here at the start of the plating line. The bumpers will come over on these racks here, and then they'll rack them up and hook them up to where they can pick them up with our hoist system. So what we're going to see first is they're going to go into an electro cleaner tank, which is a really hot, about 180 degree tank, and that gets all the dirt, oil, grease, whatever might be on that bumper. You know, again, it's like a paint job. I'm sure. I'm looking down this line. I don't know how many tanks, but this process of tanks is like a block and a half long. I mean, this is no overnight deal putting this plating on. Yeah. You know, we moved into this building in 1980, and uh -huh. this plating line was probably about half as long sure. as it was now. And as we added the zero discharge mm -hmm. and more capacity for plating tanks, we just kept adding and adding. So, Well, let's walk down here and kind of look at some of the tanks and solutions and kind of follow the process. All righty. So we're here at the start of the line, and this is the pre-soak and the electro cleaner tanks. You can see them pulling a bumper up right now. And even though it soaks and gets most of the stuff off, we want to make sure so they sponge every one. So after the bumpers are washed, they'll go in this electro acid behind me, which is basically about 10% muratic. So what that does is it just etches the surface of the steel and kind of roughs, roughs it up microscopically to where the plating will stick to it. So part of the process isn't only making sure the concentrations are right, because we're zero discharge, we have to make sure there's not impurities in the tanks. Sure. So we have our own lab here that we're constantly running tests on all the tanks throughout the line. I can see how that would be an absolute necessity. So we try not to ever dump a bath. What we do is recycle it as much as possible. And these acids used to get dumped once a week. Now we'll go a year or two before we have to get yeah. rid of them. I was just thinking that it's kind of hard to fathom, but with zero discharge, some of the liquids in these tanks could be the same liquid that was in there three, four, five years ago. At least. Just filtered, yes. clean, filtered, right. clean. Yes. I knew I would see a lot of cool stuff today at Valley Chrome, but I ha had no idea I'd be seeing your laboratory. <laughs> yes, exactly right. You know, in the old days, we'd look at stuff coming out of the plating and we'd say, you know, we need a little of this or a little of that, so we'd dump it in. And the problem was that you'd have highs and you'd have lows. It'd look real shiny or real dull. Nowadays, we have a complete lab, so we do testing all day long. We can run a test, we know exactly what to do and when. Yeah, you're using science. You're using hard data, and that probably is a requirement of your ISO certification. It is. Yeah. We're finally done with the pre-plate, and these green tanks behind us are the nickel tanks. And the nickel tanks are like the plating, like the painting coat in a paint job. So the bumper stays in there for about an hour, and there's two different kinds of nickel. There's a dull nickel and a bright nickel, and what that does is it puts two layers of plating on, and it's a corrosion barrier. So the plating that we do today is about 10 times as corrosion resistant as it was 20 years ago. Behind me you can see the chrome tank and where it'll stay in the nickel for an hour, in the chrome it stays in for about three minutes. It puts on about 15 millionths of chrome, but it's like a lacquer over the, over the nickel. We can't live without it and the nickel is kind of yellow, the chrome makes it uh, kind of a clearer coat. So we're here at the final unloading stage of the chrome cycle. And you can see them picking the bumpers up after the chrome and rinsing them off. They're going to take them out, and then they're going to set them right down here, and then they're going to unrack them and go on to the rollers for our next process, which is the paint. So we're at the paint process. The bumpers come off the line. They've inspected it. They've flipped it over, and now they're rolling it in the paint booth to put the corrosion-resistant primer on the back. And you go back four or five years ago, Valley wasn't putting the protective coating on the back. It was just kind of a lightly chromed, unfinished. I think yes. this adds a lot of value for the customer. It does. It looks so much better. Sure. Every once in a while, we'll get that phone call. Guy got his bumper home. He took it out of the box, and he said, man, the bottom flange doesn't look like the rest of the bumper. And after what we've seen today, of course, you're focused on the ends, the top flange, and the face of the bumper, which is all covered by your one-year warranty not to rust right. or peel. 
but the bottom of the bumper is where you have to attach it to go through all the tanks. Uh, of course, you're not going to spend as much time and finesse on this bottom flange as you do the front. But I just wanted all of you all to know, don't get alarmed or concerned when you've got an occasional grinding mark or an imperfection on the bottom flange that incidentally is facing straight down to, towards the pavement. Right. Rest assured, all your valley bumpers are going to look great on the front, the top, and both ends. So we're going to try and do everything we can to ensure it's got the right coating, even if there are some little grinding lines on sure. it. You know, we're putting just as much plating on the bottom as we are anywhere else, but in some areas it's just not polished because it doesn't show. So we'll touch that up, and we also have a serial number that's right in the middle on the bottom of every, every bumper. bumper. One more thing, on the stainless bumpers you do offer, they're polished stainless. They're not chromed over stainless. They're just a really nice polished finish. Yes, we use a 304 stainless, which is a good grade of stainless, the and best. it's polished. Yeah. Uh, when it's in the flat, so it's really a uh, mirror finish. It's a non-directional polishing finish, so you don't see any polishing lines in it at all. It's really beautiful. Gotcha. Well, there you have it, folks. Now you know what we know. So once the parts come out and they're sprayed, they go through these heaters mm -hmm. uh, so we can get that paint to harden up, make sure there's no overspray left on the part, mm -hmm. wax them down, bubble wrap them, and then they'll get packaged and go to the warehouse to get shipped out. Okay, we're at the final stop for Valley Chrome Bumpers, which is the warehouse. They've been boxed. Now they're getting palletized and getting ready to ship out to Four State and people all over the country. Well, I know as far as Four State, our number one product category with you is the front and rear bumpers, but we still got the Wingmaster Tour to do, don't we? We do. Uh, we picked that company up about 15 years ago, and that's really been a, a great addition to our product line. Let's go give the folks a snapshot. All righty. All right, so as we talked about, you guys also own the Wingmaster brand, which is stainless steel for the outside, inside of the truck, all sorts of things. The turbo wings, looks like we're smack dab in the middle of where it all happens. So kind of tell us a little bit about this department. You know, back in the day, they just built the wings like you see one here being assembled. Mm -hmm. But since then, we've added visors, we've added cabin sleeper panels, we've added all kinds of accents, you know, uh, mud flap weights. I mean, you name it, and we build it. Mm -hmm. It's shiny, it goes on a truck. We pretty much build it here. Mm -hmm. And it just made sense for us. We're sending bumpers all across the country. Why not make some accessories and throw them on top of the pallet, going to the customers? Your customer base was interested in both lines. Why not? Right. Yep. You know, looking around, I'm seeing air cleaner light panels, cabin sleeper panels, all sorts of fender trim. I mean, it's really a well-rounded brand. I know at Four State, we push a lot of that Wingmaster stuff out the front yeah. door. We tool appreciate boxes that. Toolboxes has been another big popular. Battery boxes, yep, Battery for boxes, sure. toolboxes. Yep. Yeah. You know, even the turbo wings, which were kind of an 80s thing, they're actually making a bit of a comeback. Anything retro is, is getting a, a resurgence in popularity. So we're selling a few more of those today than we did a few years back. And it's not only that they look good, but it gives a, the driver stability, uh -huh. uh, fuel efficiency. Those are all big parts of the, the trucking game. Yep. We used to say that by adding a turbo wing, you'd pick up at least a tenth of a percent. And I, I think that's fairly accurate. You're not going to back me up no, on that? I'm no, I'm not sure those statistics. You'd have to ask Big Bob. I heard it was more like 2 or 3 percent. <laughs> I've heard as much as 10 percent. That's what I've heard at the truck stop, so yeah. it's got to be gospel. So we've wrapped up our tour here at uh, Valley Chrome Plating. We've learned a lot today about bumpers especially, and I want to take a minute before we jump on a plane and head back to Missouri. Ray, why don't you introduce everybody here, the Lucas family and the family behind the I'd love to, Brian. Hi, my name's Ray Lucas, and the family here is my brother Greg, Kent Carpenter, did sales for us for 30 years, my sister Kathy Bowie, my brother Matthew, my other sister Christine Newman, and our general mangler, I mean general manager, Tom Lucas. <laughs> Good at it, too. <laughs> I can personally vouch for Kent's salesmanship. He's been my salesman for 30 years, and you're number one in my book, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, I hope you all had as much fun as we did, and we'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Are you ready? Because I know I am. After much anticipation, here's your first four trucks to be selected for the 2021 Chrome Shop Mafia Outlaw Trucks calendar. Here we go. All right, claiming spot number one is the Dennis Marable family from Oklahoma. Take a look at their hardworking fleet of Pete loggers. 
What Dennis loves most about four state trucks is the huge store and the staff. Spot number two goes to the Chad Hesse family out of Ohio. Take a look at his impressive Western star. Chad's favorite things are the crew at Four State and the ability to do one-off custom parts for his star car. Spot number three goes to the Levi Weber family out of Iowa. Take a look at their awesome Kenworth. Levi loves the service and the ability at Four State to custom build parts for his truck. Spot number four is going to go to Brandon Davis from right here in Missouri. Take a peek at his super sharp Peterbilt. He likes the large variety and selection at Four State as well as the awesome crew. Stay tuned. We've got more calendar truck announcements coming up real soon. Hey guys, I know you're having a great time at GBATS Live because I know we are. Unprecedented in some of the things that we're showing tonight. You know, Guilty by Association Truck Show and Four State Trucks we're innovators, not imitators. And while GBATS Live may have not been something we would have done outside of the opticals of 2020, man, it's been unbelievable, the excitement of tonight. We know you're kicking back and enjoying things there in your shops and your front rooms. We're enjoying things here. You are not going to want to miss what's coming up next in the big rig burnouts. Uh, unbelievable is, is an understatement. Action packed uh, and it's right around the corner. Guys, we appreciate you. Everything that you do day in and day out. Don't be a stranger. Come by. We're here at Four State Trucks. Kick back. Enjoy the rest of the evening at GBATS Live. We're here today with Mr. Chad Smith from Upper Sandusky, Ohio. He is the owner of STS Transit. Thanks for making the trip out to see us, man. Well, thanks for having me. We saw you recently up at Rantoul, and like every show that you put your truck and trailer in, it caught our attention, and we wanted to feature it for this year's GBATS live stream. So I know you're as busy as any of us, probably busier than a lot, but it means a lot that you took time out to make the trip and film with us. Thank you for that. Well, we're excited to be a part of it. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about STS. You know, how'd you guys get your start? What are you doing today? Any br breaking news or anything you want to share about the company? Well, STS started um, actually in the 80s. Dad, mm -hmm. uh, my, my dad and mom, they uh, started a trucking company. Right. Uh, actually, dad worked for his dad, my mm -hmm. grandfather, for a while mm -hmm. and developed a relationship with the Lubeck Glass Company. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, my dad and I were talking about it just recently mm -hmm. and we, been with the Lubecks uh, mm -hmm. for 48 years. Mm -hmm. um, but he started uh, his own company in the 80s mm -hmm. um, and built it um, up until 2013 where my wife and I mm -hmm. uh, purchased the company from my parents mm -hmm. and uh, continued the relationship with the Lubecks. Um, it's all been a long long-term relationship built on a handshake oh yeah hey that's unheard of this day and age yes. you know business relationships like that that's just based on each other's word and good service priceless it is and yeah. it's you know yeah. we we can't be who we are without them mm -hmm. and uh from the, the the generation i'm working with they feel the same way about us that's awesome man count yourself lucky that's, we, that's a great we story. feel blessed now you guys are primarily in dumps you run around the ohio and louisville kentucky regions kind of stay in that realm yes uh, ohio kentucky tennessee um mm -hmm. a fair amount of indiana and a little bit of alabama mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we service two of the lubeck's recycling facilities mm -hmm. uh, one in ohio and one in kentucky mm -hmm. um, we occasionally branch out to their one in pennsylvania but my my uncle actually does most mm -hmm. of the uh, transportation for them in that facility i see well, I imagine if you're like most of us, you've probably been riding shotgun in these trucks since you was knee high. Tell us how you kind of got your start and decided you wanted to stick in, you wanted to stick it out in trucking. Great question. <laughs> when I was younger, uh, I, I started greasing trailers when I was eight years old, but uh -huh. uh, I kind of fell away from, from trucking a little bit. Uh, at the time, Dad had four trucks. Uh -huh. um, gosh, watched him struggle, you know, uh -huh. when there wasn't enough work. and 
going out finding finding flatbed work to do and some right, other stuff. Right. We were living in Pennsylvania at the time. That was before they built the facility in Ohio. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, we'd go and ride with dad, but really had no interest in doing it. Mm. it just uh, I in school I had interest in computers and math, science, stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, and in my senior year, right before my senior year of high school, we moved to Ohio. The Lubex uh -huh. had built that facility and, and uh, dad was offered the exclusive hauling out of it. And mm -hmm. um, at that point, I went to work at the glass plant right. um, after school and on Saturdays. And mm -hmm. they, they put me running a front end loader. Mm -hmm. So I was mm -hmm. loading all these trucks. Uh, and. Uh, I'd, I'd go over and work for dad part time and it kind of it started to develop my interest in it uh -huh. and uh, it was really funny one day I was I was going to uh, to diesel school I graduated high school I was still working at the Lubax and dad uh -huh. looked at me one day and he says are you ever going to come to work for me <laughs> he finally just had to say it oh he did he did which when I actually when I was 16 I wanted to work for him and he told me no uh -huh. he said uh -huh. I had to work go work for somebody else first right. to a lot develop, of families uh, do that yep. I think it's smart yeah and and it did it did mm -hmm. you know when I started working for Delubex, I developed the interest in mm -hmm. this type of work. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like you're about to get the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> Couple more years, I'll have it down. I know you guys got a very successful business, so hats off. Tell me about the 2019 Pete. The truck speaks for itself. I can't wait to show you all the interior, but you got a 2019 Pete and a 2020 Mac, Mac trailer. trailer. Yes. Okay. The, uh, the truck, we actually had a uh, it was going to be the the 100th truck that was mm -hmm. purchased since dad started buying his own trucks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i wanted to do something special and i had a glider kit ordered right and that was when the government cracked down a bit they right limited the amount time. of yep. glider yep. kits and uh my order got shuffled mm -hmm. shuffled out mm -hmm. i had four ordered and i mm -hmm. got shuffled back and i kind of gave up i wasn't going to do something special for the 100th because i still had to update equipment and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh i saw this this truck it was uh sitting on a lot at uh, Hunter's Truck Sales in Pennsylvania. I see. And it was, uh, it was the white, had the blue frame, and they had put this stripe on it. I see. Uh -huh. And I, did, I fell in love with it. I yep. thought this, because I, I had a plum crazy purple truck ordered. Right. And I did not envision uh -huh. these colors until I saw it. And I, I thought, you know, man, that to, could be it. To find a truck with these specs, wheelbase, this color frame, it's that was meant lot. to be. The day yeah. you spotted that, I feel like it was a sign from above. Yep. And Purchase me. <laughs> yeah. And it was a dealership that I had, had a long time relationship with. Yeah. And I, uh -huh. I, I saw it and I thought, man, I. Right on. So how's she spec'd out? Is it, uh, I'm going to take a guess, Cummins power? Yes. Cummins? 605 Cummins. Uh -huh. uh, 13 speed, mm -hmm. 300 inch wheelbase. Mm -hmm. um, 342 rears, I think. It, it's, it's set up how I would, how yeah. I would order one. 605, I mean, that's as big as it gets. She does a fine job, I'm sure. You know, all these emission engines, I mean, they do take a bad rap, and we all wish it was back to the old days, mm -hmm. but these later models are actually getting to where a guy can make a living with them and survive. Yeah, they have came a long way. It's like 2016, 17, 18, and Since 19. the X-15s, I mm -hmm. think, yeah. It, we got, when I first purchased the company off of Dad, we had a real tough time with some emission trucks. Mm -hmm. And that's when we went to gliders. And mm -hmm. I, I've got a fleet of glider kits, mm -hmm. but uh, the last four trucks that, that uh, mm -hmm. we've purchased have been X-15s mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they're really, I think they're really doing well. Yeah. Well, let's walk up here. You can show me some, some of your favorite features on the truck. The STS, the, the step plates that are custom, custom made from. Uh, yeah. You did the strapless breathers. And then I haven't seen this octagon, I guess is what you'd call that pattern. Yes. Uh, that's really unique. Uh, I know we offer them, but I haven't seen a lot haven't of them like out on the out on the road. And I wouldn't have done octagon. That was one of the other things the hunters had done. Uh -huh. They had an octagon uh -huh. grill in this, yeah. and I wanted to match the uh, the air cleaners. In fact, uh, every truck that we buy, the first mm -hmm. one of the first things we do is mm -hmm. chop these air cleaners. And right. we learned how to do that on uh -huh. one of your how-to oh, videos. Oh yeah, yeah. That goes way back. I bet I, we did that how-to 15 years ago. Hey, I'm going to call this a cheap trick, but this is something you guys undoubtedly fabricated on the fly that really looks nice, covering up all the nasty wiring and everything. Yeah, I like how they came out, especially with the, the lowered mirror brackets. And, and without the, mm -hmm. one of the first things we did was pull the spot mirrors off because I mm -hmm. didn't like how they looked. And mm -hmm. I, then I couldn't, I couldn't see out of the mirrors. So oh, we, for sure. 
we got the uh, the lowered mirror brackets for it. Went with the kind of the cab light theme throughout. That works really well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we ran with it. It had the cab lights up there when I bought the truck, mm -hmm. and, and uh, generally when I order a truck, I order with no lights, and mm -hmm. we, we put penny lights up there to mm -hmm. keep it real smooth, but mm -hmm. I think it really worked on this truck. I like how you kept a certain amount of shine, but like you not only painted the visor and the door chops, but your windshield trim, wiper arms, man, it really works with this white color. Looks good. Thank you. Coming on around, you got the uh, mitered end bumper. What is that, a 20 inch? 20 yes, 20 inch miter end. Uh, mm -hmm. We did, uh, last year I didn't have the lift bumper on it and I got real close a couple times. Mm -hmm. and so we, I went ahead and bought the lift bumper kit to get it up if I go in some place to deliver and it doesn't look just quite right. Kind of a must have when you're jumping curbs and getting off road here and there. Yep. So you got the headwinds, headlights on double J brackets. That's yep. a really cool feature that you don't see on a lot of 389s. Yeah, I like that. I, I don't necessarily mind the factory headlights, but mm -hmm. man, I, I really like a, a, a double round or we've got a couple that we put, you know, yeah, change the lights it Gives it on. a lot more of a classic, more classic character, look, yeah. which goes with your overall theme. More custom billet work here that you had done for yep. you. It's a full emission truck. So you got the big slip cover uh, over here covering up your burner box and everything. Yep, absolutely, uh, everything's... Full stainless, man, that looks sharp. Thank you, it, it came out really well. We put the uh, put a drop kit on that too to lower that box cover down. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your uh, cab cow it. panels, got the lights drilled in it all the way around? Yeah, actually we uh, we fabricated uh, panels up and behind there. Uh -huh. the, they're not in the, in the not panels. In the, okay, no, you we, added them on? We did, yeah, yeah we, we went ahead and went up and behind and went went deeper with them, mm -hmm. I guess. Who made your step plates for you? Uh, Lifetime Lugnuts. That's what I thought. Yep. It looks like some of their good work. Yeah, they do looks a sharp. great job. They did the yep. uh, the grill emblem also. Yep, JR and the boys up there, they know what they're mm -hmm. doing. Eight inch pipes, West Coast turnouts. You don't see a lot of these on 2019 389 emission trucks. No, you don't, but man, I really like them. I dig them, they're sharp. Thanks. Polished out tanks, and I'm thinking one of these has got to be a split tank to run your end dump, right? Yep, this is a split tank. But then uh, that eye panel uh, yep. came from Chrome Shop. Uh huh. Yeah, this all flows with your airbag cover, shock box, and that. That looks really sharp. You guys have somebody around you do the painting? You do, do you do it yourself? Um, Mikey from Woods Rod and Custom. He is dating my cousin. He's gonna end up being part of the mm -hmm. family. He just, mm -hmm. he's dragging his feet on asking. And I <laughs> imagine this might help, but he, uh, he does a great job. He's got a shop in uh, Freeport, Pennsylvania. He, uh -huh. first thing I ever had him, to, had him do, I sent these fenders to him. Mm -hmm. I told him what I wanted and he hand laid these stripes out on the fenders mm -hmm. and they just came out amazing. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a so. top hand. Those look great. And then I see you put the stone film on the front of it keep it from getting all peppered I did. up. Did we didn't do that gravel. for a while and I thought man I was I was playing with fire. That's the best invention they ever came out yep. with. Are these FiberTech fenders? These are FiberTech fenders. <laughs> <laughs> well they look good. Uh, there again you got the Roadworks hub covers in there stainless. Yes, I love those. They, uh -huh. they really make a wheel uh -huh. stand out. I like kind of the thin lip here instead of the big heavy covers the sidewall I the do tire. too. I don't like them yep. dropping down too far. Yep. And then you get back here also Fiberglass or metal? No, I had a fiberglass bumper on it last mm -hmm. year. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I spent this winter. I fabbed that rear bumper myself. No kidding. Hey, yeah. man, good job. I, did. I like. Yeah. I like dabbling a little uh -huh. in a little bit of welding, and uh -huh. I thought I, I'm just going to make what I want. Yeah. So is this steel then? It is steel. Right yep. on. Yeah. Hey, it's built to last. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. No, it looks good. You loaded that sucker up with lights. Flaps all the way across. It takes two men and a boy to lift it I'm on I'm sure there, it does, yeah. But like I said, when it's done living its life on this truck, you can move it to the next yeah, one probably. It should be just fine. Yeah. So 2020 Mack trailer, how long is it? 39 foot. 39 foot. 39 foot, 60 inch sides, 10 to spread. Not your uh, typical trailer with the painted and striped uh, bottom here. Well, we equipped with LED lighting as well. <laughs> When we talked about the trailer, Mikey looked at me and said, what do you think about painting the floor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just kind of started laughing. I said, whatever, whatever you think. Uh -huh. And I, I didn't think he was serious. And we got to talking more about it and decided to do it. As we were doing it, Cole, which Cole's my right hand guy uh -huh. when it comes to customizing and working on, working mm -hmm. on his truck. He's got more time in this than I do. Mm -hmm. But we were sitting there watching Mikey paint. Yeah, yeah. And I looked at Cole and I said, this might be the coolest and the dumbest thing we've ever done. 
So we laid a lot of paint up overhead. Yeah, you know, without the painted bottom, it's truly a custom trailer, but this makes it way custom. <laughs> it's a super nice touch, man. It just pull, it just takes it to the next level. I mean, everything here is polished out. Yep, 100%. we had uh, actually Evan uh, from Evan's Detailing yeah, came. Yeah. He I did. Know Evan. He did all the polishing on the trailer. Man, a polisher that starts on a trailer like this has got commitment. Because when you start, <laughs> you got to finish, and it's going to be a few days later he, uh, when you finish. We did it in, uh, he, got to our, he got to my shop on a Sunday. Uh -huh. We started Sunday night, we worked Monday and Tuesday. By Tuesday night, it was done, and uh -huh. he had done the tanks and the grill on the truck. So we were trying to prep for Louisville this year. He wasn't letting no grass grow. No, we worked long days, and, and, and I had two of my guys committed to it, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Josh, my mechanic, and Cole, mm -hmm. and then Evan had one of his guys with him. And mm -hmm. uh, but, I'm sure uh, you all learned a lot from Evan that week. Oh, we did. <laughs> we did. He's he's great. Yeah. Now everything here, like this, was all factory from Mac. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they build a top shelf trailer, so they I do. figured it was. They do. The only thing we did um, is we we enclosed in some of the back of that. We built plates. Mm -hmm. We plated off the bottom of the frame to mm -hmm. to just try to keep the the dirt out and to be honest try to keep the cleaning down at Louisville right 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 yeah we learn little tricks like that yeah. after you do a few seasons so have you ever counted up all the LEDs on the trailer you know how many's on here I know between the truck and the trailer it's it's over 400 somewhere 400 <laughs> that's a bunch well it looks stellar yep that is one fine trailer there well let's jump up Thanks. here and uh, check out the inside let's do it <laughs> Oh man, everything in here, Chad, is phenomenal. Like I, like I said, love the whole truck, but in here is high impact. I mean, you brought, there is no wood grain left, no black plastic that comes from the Peterbilt <laughs> factory. It's all been reworked. I mean, tell us a little bit about what you guys did in here. And it'll take a while to tell me everything. <laughs> we did. We, we started taking, we pulled the dash panels out, which we do with a lot of our trucks when mm -hmm. we're getting ready to paint them. And Cole mm -hmm. looked at me, he's, he said, are we going to take the full dash out? And I told him, it's now or never. Right, right. So everything came out of the truck. The inside of the cabin sleeper was nothing but sheet metal and wires. Right, right. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, it was funny. My dad kept joking, joking around about we were going to have to take it back to the factory to uh -huh, get it put back uh -huh. together. On a tow truck. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, so then we took and we sanded all... Oh, the, uh, texture, the texture gone and it, that took forever uh -huh. but we sanded the texture out of everything oh, wow. and then uh then painted everything mm -hmm. custom fit the floor put the mm -hmm. put the stripe in the floor to match the outside mm -hmm. um and then uh portage trim in ravenna mm -hmm. uh, did our soft parts they didn't have the truck they'd never seen the truck in person they saw mm -hmm. some pictures and mm -hmm. This is what they came up with for the doors and the headliner, and, and they knocked it out of the park. I mean, and they, they did, did the that kind of carry in, carry out. The truck was never in the shop. The truck shop. was never in their shop. We that's, took them that's pieces. That's impressive. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they they did an, an amazing job. We took a uh, Mikey. Uh, he painted everything in mm -hmm. in the, the cab here, mm -hmm. and then uh, Cole and I we we tore the sleeper apart, and then he and I painted everything back there. Mm -hmm. And then the. Uh, the uh, glittery pillows were my wife's touch. I would, I would they, have said that maybe a female was involved with that. Yep, and yeah. she, she, I get more yeah. comments <laughs> about those at a show than anything else in the interior. Well, good choice on her part. She did great. Well done, yep. well done, Absolutely. bravo. Yeah, you got the, brought the cab lights in here, and this was a pretty another simple cheap trick, just putting a stainless plate yes. uh, to mount these yep. instead yep. of the factory dome lights, which are kind of you know drab. You try yeah. to class it up a little bit, and. Yep. Uh, Painted up a, a banjo four-spoke steering wheel. Yep. Got uh, probably lifetime's pedals. Absolutely. If I was guessing. Lifetime. Yep. 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 Blinged up the shifter here with the Cummins logo. Mm -hmm. And my absolute favorite part of the whole truck is the tumbler <laughs> that's painted to match and striped like the truck. If it didn't have your name, I might try to swipe it from you. <laughs> yeah. But I'd get caught. I'd get busted. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, hats off, man. You guys uh, rocked it in here. You got a, uh, I see the sound system. I'm looking back here, seeing the subwoofer. Yep, Kevin from Davis uh, mm -hmm. helped me, mm -hmm. helped me out with that. He sent us the, sent us what he thought we should have, and mm -hmm. he was right. They've got quite a reputation for the sound systems. They do. Yeah. They do a knockout yeah. job with it. Yeah. Well, hey, man, it's it's incredible. I love the truck, especially the interior. Well, thank you. And the glittery pillows are awesome. <laughs> So, X15605, right? And you guys yes. have done quite a bit of work under here. We did uh, the PDI chrome intake manifold. Mm -hmm. 
uh, some custom piping from SH2. Oh, that looks sharp. This is the factory pipe. Mm -hmm. I stripped the paint off it yeah. and I buffed it. There you go. Uh, most X15s you see, you have a big chunk of wiring goes through here. Right. Just covers this all up. Mm -hmm. And I took and I had I stripped uh, in between my dispatching phone calls. I stripped uh -huh. all the wiring off of this. I ran it all down underneath the intake manifold. I just wanted to clean it oh, up. Oh, I mean, you did it too. For an emission motor, when when, yeah. you, when you open the hood of a glider, it's clean. Mm -hmm. And it's tough to make it an emission engine clean. Mm -hmm. And that's what I. That's what we tried to do. Factory air ride front axle, right? Yes, it is. Yep. yep. And then you got your flip kit. You even polished out the cylinder there. We did. Had to shine <laughs> everything. Let's hit the other side. So. so a lot of chrome plated piping over here for sure. Yeah. Uh, again, the SH2 pipe here. Now this is all from PDI. This mm -hmm. is their this is their added turbo kit for the mm -hmm. X15. Hmm. Um, this truck puts out about seven seven hundred seven hundred fifty horsepower. So how many miles you got on it now? Just around fifteen thousand. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I've I've worked. Uh, I've not worked a trailer at all. Mm -hmm. The truck. Mm -hmm. I've I've mm -hmm. begun to work. Mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. bring myself to put anything in the trailer. Right, yet. right, right. But uh, so I mean that's pretty radical engine work for something that's still that low of miles. It is, know? and it's you know I drive this myself mm -hmm. uh, when I go work. I've mm -hmm. I've had it down in Kentucky, Tennessee, working, mm -hmm. uh, which really makes pulling hills nice. Oh yeah, for um, sure. And now this is all emission compliant. Yeah, I've I mean, only seen one other functioning, like out in the workforce, at a turbo kit, mm -hmm. other than this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it, that's cool. It does. It works great. Uh, my, I, I ended up putting a pyrometer on it because I was curious. If this yeah. thing stays cool. It uh -huh. just, and it does. It runs good with no, no problems. Fuel mileage is good with it. Good stuff. Well, Chad, I have enjoyed, first of all, the visit, getting to know you a lot better than I did previously. You, the crew, the family have got to be super proud of this unit, man. It stands tall. Any highway, any show you go to, you're looking good. Thank you. We really appreciate yeah. it. Well, hey, thanks for spending time, and uh, you have a safe trip back home. Well, thanks for having us. Uh huh. All right, gang, we're back with you live right here at Exit 4 in Joplin, Missouri. And I've just been told we've got a bona fide watch party out here on the front parking lot. I love that. <laughs> so how are we doing so far? You enjoying what you're seeing? I'm telling you, Truett Equipment Express, man, they nailed it with the design of that Doc Holiday truck. Going out to Valley Chrome was a learning experience for me. I had a lot of fun and got to see a bunch of the Lucas family that I don't typically get to see. And then STS, it was great meeting Chad, checking out his awesome Peterbilt and that impressive Mack trailer. But let's talk about GBATs, savings, sales. There's a lot of things you associate every September with GBATs. One thing is you're always probably going to see a bunch of OOIDA volunteers running around helping us pull this thing together. The other thing as we talk is the sales. So we got a lot more action. Be sure and share this with all your friends. Let's pump this viewership up and get the good folks at CEI to write that big check to Special Olympics. Stay tuned. Have you been keeping track of how many times we've said OIDA? OIDA, why OIDA? It's a contest, guys. How many times? Well, that's three. I've... OIDA. Oh, no. Four. What? <laughs> OIDA. <laughs> <laughs> you guys better be keeping track because at the end of the show, it's going to be a very cool prize given out to one lucky person. Just for keeping track of OIDA. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Carlin and Isela here from the Truck Boss Show, and here is your trivia question. All right, are you ready? A popular current communications tool used by companies to contact or locate their drivers on the road with a load is called what? Hmm. There's your question. Let's see how many of you know the answer. All right, we got a trivia question out there on the board. It's brought to you by TBS Factory and the Truck Boss Show. They're America's number one factoring company, and they do a lot more than just factoring. They've got fuel card programs. They've got a free load board, and they've always got a friendly and dynamic team of workers to help you out with whatever your needs are. 
Compliments of TBS, we've got this pinnacle ultra leather seat that you're going to get if you're the right answer. Uh, this pinnacle seat is top of the line. It's a $1,200 value. The cool thing about a pinnacle is it can serve us as a low base seat, clear up through a standard base. Awesome seat, Cadillac, top shelf product. So the question was, a popular current communications tool used by companies to contact or locate their drivers, what is it called? Remember, it's going to be a one word answer. So we're looking for that winner. And then we're going to get this pinnacle seat to you before long. Thanks to TBS for sponsoring this and uh, the good folks right down the road in Oklahoma City. Do we have a winner? Mark Odell. Mark Odell, Mark Odell you just went home with a $1,200 seat, my friend. Thanks to the folks at Truck Boss Show and TBS Factory. So congrats. That's one, privi that's one trivia prize down and three more to go. So keep your seat belts buckled. And we got a lot more action coming your way. Good evening. Dan Lentz of 104 Magazine here, along with John Testa, our digital and social media content manager. We hope you're enjoying the virtual version of the 2020 GBATS tonight. We at 104 Magazine have never missed a GBATS event since its inception, and this year is no different, even if it is. Thanks, Dan. What a great job the boss man, Brian Martin, and the boys at Four State Trucks and the Chrome Shop Mafia are doing here, making the best of this difficult situation. Obviously, all of us at 10-4 are disappointed we can't be in Joplin in person for this year's show, but we look forward to being back in real life for GBATS 2021. And knowing how Four State Trucks operates, we're pretty excited to see great things coming in store for us next year. These guys never disappoint. They do not. Hey, sit back, crack a cold one if you can, and enjoy the show. We all know this isn't how any of us saw 2020 going when it started, but we applaud Brian and his team for their creativity and commitment to producing such an awesome virtual event in place of the real one. 10-4 and 4 State Trucks have enjoyed a great partnership for almost 20 years now, and we want to wish all of our family and friends there in Joplin all the best. Have a great night. Y'all have a great show. We'll talk to you later. Hey, gang, we got J.C. Alt, my good friend here from Lafayette, Indiana, the one you're used to seeing here at GBATS, getting everybody parked in a straight line and so on and so forth. So, J.C., we're not together tonight, but what have you been up to? Not much, just trucking it up. Sure wish we were together, but how about tonight's show? You're putting on a heck of a deal, just like always. Uh, first class all the way, buddy. Hey. It's been good so far, and we ain't by no means done yet. We still got a lot of cool trucking TV coming at you. So thanks for tuning in, and we will see you down the road a piece. You too, and keep the shiny side up, everybody. We sure do miss everybody and can't wait to 2021. It's going to be a heck of a show and even better, I'm sure. All right, man. You take care, bud. You too, buddy. <laughs> guys, guys, didn't they tell you there's no like live three-day show in Joplin this year? It's all online. Are we early? <laughs> Man. Are you sure? Well, if you're here for 2021, good to see you, Larry. <laughs> right. Then you're then you're a little early, but that's yep. all right. Hey, uh, thanks for taking part in our feature here. Uh, we wanted to get one of these hot fleener trucks in this year's film, so. I'm glad to be here. Everett Ford, Larry Lawhead, Everett's uh, over at Fleener Brothers. It's not so long ago that you used to work here at Four State Trucks in the install shop. Oh, yeah. We call those the good old days, or at least we do. I don't know what you may call them. It's good old days. <laughs> it's changed. But it's really cool that you ended up, of all trucking places in the country, with ones essentially right here in Joplin at Fleener Brothers. Oh, yeah. I know uh, Casey's a good friend of ours, and uh, everybody that knows him loves him. Yeah. Tell me, a lot of things have changed over at Fleener Brothers. I think for the better the last few months. What are you guys into these days? Uh, they do heavy haul, flat steps. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of dry van. Mm -hmm. We just started last couple months, few months, mm -hmm. uh, reefer division. Um, that's what I run. Pretty I, diversified. I run on it. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. 
You run in, you guys, 48 states, or do you stay in certain regions? Uh, 48 states, Canada. They'll uh -huh. go to Alaska. Uh -huh. A lot of dry vans will go to Alaska. Reefers yeah. haven't gone up there yeah. yet. Um, we do a lot of California. I That's my home away from that's, home. That's uh, El Everett. He's California Shuffle, man. I think I think he would pay Fleener if they just let him do that and nothing else. That's it. That's <laughs> it. It seems like, this goes back a few months or years, but it seemed like Fleener, uh, Kyle and them used to do a lot of explosives and stuff going north Still south. do. Still nice. do. Uh, Canada. Nice. Um, Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, that's what I'm taking out is explosives out to California on this go around. Cool deal. Well, thanks for cutting out half a day to come over here and play with us and make some make some film. I know we're all three going to enjoy it. Hopefully, everybody else is oh, yeah. too. But uh, so. when it comes to the Fleener fleet, there's no slouches in the bunch. No, I mean, not. they're not all long and tall W9s, but it's still safe to say there's no slouches in the bunch. And I know that's largely part, Larry, to you over at MHC. And this would have to qualify as one of Larry's custom Kenworths. I know you and Kyle go way back. Tell us a little bit about how this truck came to be in existence over at Fleener. Well, this truck kind of came to be as it was a stock truck that we'd spec. It was one of our lot rods that we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd laid down the paint scheme on it, and I'd had the colors changed up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. We got to visiting back and forth, and I kind of told him what I had coming. And then he's like, man, why don't you switch that cream out and make it the base color and change the brown around a little uh -huh. bit? He said, I'll own that truck. Uh -huh. He said, if you're ready to do it, let's get it on. Right. Let's get her done. So we, we changed the cream to the base color. We took the brown, and we added it to the stripes kind of shuffled everything around so it gives it a four color look and it's all about how you lay your lines. Oh, for sure. You know, if you swap everything up and it looks just right, mm -hmm. it'll almost give it an effect of a four color truck, but it's actually mm -hmm. a three color. Yeah. And, you know, paint the frames, do the tanks, do some accent on the interior. Well, it, ready to rock and it's roll. a winning look. Man, I'm telling you, I've noticed over the years, if you do those earthy tones, those browns, creams, oranges, coppers, <clears throat> Man, everybody likes it. And the 27-year-old's going to like it, and the 70-year-old's going to like it. I mean, I dig the look. It looks really kind of got a vintage bite to it. Well, Everett, tell us about the truck. I don't know, but I'm assuming this is a 2019? 2020. 2020. So, I mean, she's new. How many miles you got on it today? About 126,000. Well, it ain't been setting still for a 20 model. It has. This thing turns a lot of heads. Good deal. I think KC yeah. knows that. Yeah, he knows you're going to take care of this because this is not only his baby, this is your pride and joy. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had the hood up earlier, so I got a little bit of a glimpse. You got a ISX Cummins under the hood? Yeah, 565, 18 speed, uh -huh. uh, 336 rears. It's uh, 285 wheelbase. 285 wheelbase. Wheelbase is perfect. I yeah. mean, 300 wouldn't have worked as good on this truck as no. 285 does. This That 285 just sets it off with the uh -huh. color and the 72-inch uh -huh. bunk. I mean, uh -huh. it just... I thought I wanted more wheelbase, but when it's hooked to that reefer, it's it's just it's a perfect stance. Right. Well, let's head up to the front and we'll kind of start there. All right. It's got a Valley Chrome bumper, hand mm -hmm. form, mm -hmm. painted the back side of it. It's the boltless mm -hmm. That's the style I wanted. You added the seven grill bars? Yes. That works. Did it come with no horns, Larry, and you just added lights? Uh, I order them all without horns, and if you want to add the lights, you add the lights, but like they shaved the on the top they took the top down and they shaved the bumps off for the xm radio nice. so them are gone right and then uh, makes it that kind of clean smooth look our body yep. shop does that for them that somewhat short reverse bow tie visor sure works with yeah. the old school look i really like that i wanted the swan on the hood just to kind of give it more of a retro look uh-huh that really threw it over there when uh -huh. we put it on there put the crooked bug on there. Oh yeah, yeah, I like the vinyl graphics yeah. on the logo there, going old school there. Uh -huh. Now this is vinyl, but everything down the side is paint, right? Yes. Good stuff. Yes. Uh, Thunder Graphics done the vinyl on it. Mm-hmm. And they done this, the name on it. Now. Yep. Got the glass cab lights down here as well as on the front of the air cleaner. Yes. Big 15 inch Vortexes, signal lights out the side. Yep. I dig it, you know. You Drop know how to make one look good. That low look. Oh yeah, I missed that. You did take some height out of the screens. Yeah. And that's pretty simple. That's kind of a simple deal too. It isn't yeah. as hard as everybody thinks. Yeah. We'll see it maybe if we raise the hood. I'm thinking maybe there's a little work been done on the front suspension. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah, maybe maybe you roll around like this all the time. Try to. <laughs> Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Go for it. So I like the chromed out charge air tubes, intake tube. 
And as suspected, you got an air ride assist on the front end. Not a lot of people going to that length on a 2020 Kenworth to make it ride low. No. <laughs> well, it works because that bumper is on the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be too sure the bumper ain't somewhat holding the truck up right now a little bit, but not probably. super cool. Super so. cool. Well, you know, there's a glider kit craze that's been going around for the past four or five years, but I can see this is a full emission truck, California legal. Uh, you can tell by the big burner box here, stainless cover, man, that thing looks sharp. Can't oh, yeah, it? yep, the stainless steel box, seven inch pipes. Man, them things got to be 13.9 tall, don't they? 13.9 and a half. Oh, you had to push it over 13.6, didn't you? Yeah, on the ground when I got it back dropped, uh -huh. it's 13.7. Wow. So it's still over height with it sitting on the ground. The painted tanks with the, the brown frame look awesome. That worked out good. The wide straps, now those are factory, aren't they? They are factory from nice. Kenworth. The, uh, I think that's a Merit deck plate that you guys painted the center on, possibly? It is. Mm -hmm. I like that look, and it looks cool, especially when you put the stainless airline box on top. Yeah, Hoke built quarter fenders, you know, the, the retro old school ones. with the well, three straps. 36 yeah. inch. That's, that's the quarter fender every truck deserves right there. Before we get all the way to the back, you were telling me these are all hand painted? Yeah, it, uh, Danny Alvarado out of California, Danny Ace Pinstriping. Nice. Done the hood, done the, the doors and, and the back. He's good. He is good. He put the name of the truck in the stripe on the back, just small enough you could see it, but not too big to be Show me what you're talking overkill. about. Oh, yeah. Done business casual in the very bottom. Business casual. The name of the truck. Yeah, this truck's got a casual look, but it's all business. I mean, right. it don't sit still. Yep. Tell me about the frame lights. Those are pretty cool. It's got the watermelon lights, glass with the mm -hmm. extreme LEDs. And under the bottom pointing down, I got a set of all LEDs. All right. LEDs all the way up the back yep. of the sleeper. TK and hubcaps, right? Yes, sir. Can't beat those. I would think those would be more popular this day and age than they are. They are. They can't beat the look. They give no. it a look. They're yeah. smooth and clean. Yep. yep. So you got the rear air on this truck. Larry, is that factory or did you guys have to pull that? They pulled this one, but you know, all the rest of our 361 specs that we've got coming in, which is, you know, your basic 72 stand up, we pulled rear air on all them. We added aluminum fifth wheels, Michelin rubber, and uh -huh. I mean, a little bit of wheelbase to them. It's, it's a builder truck, you oh, know, yeah. for the guy that wants a cool ride. Everett's got it dialed in, got the stall mat for mud flaps, flap weights. Tell me about this center panel, man. That's cool. It's stainless steel box with four inch lights. Looking um, right. Got that thing hanging pretty low too. Yeah. That's right. Covers everything up back there. I Looks just it. as good going as it does coming at you. It does. <laughs> well, Everett, I want to thank you for going all out today and coming out early and juicing the tire. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Looks good. Aluminum fifth wheel, that's getting to be pretty commonplace on about any showy truck these days. Oh. I really dig those. Well, let's go up here and check out the inside. Show me what you've done in there. Man, the inside looks so right. I dig the way you guys painted up and striped out the inside to complement the outside. Man, that is super cool. This half leather, half billet, forever sharp wheel, that's not something you see every day. Very cool. <laughs> Wanted to get that vintage rod look, you know. Yep. The button tuck upholstery there in of itself is cool, but the fact that Larry and you guys pick black over the much more common tans and grays, it just it, it looks it looks rich. It looks right. Makes those cream buttons pop yes, it even does. more. Yeah. You didn't stop there. Park brake knobs are dialed in. You got all your rockers with the jewels. And it looks like you're still trucking for tacos, man. Yeah. <laughs> Chasing taco wagons around. There ain't, there ain't nothing like a California taco. The diamond tuck on the side here, windshield post, even the overhead. Oh. That's the full kit. That is VIT, buddy. The sleeper, the cabinet doors in the sleeper, refrigerator doors done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the drawers on the bottom behind me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's VIT, uh, very important trucker. I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Thanks, I appreciate it. So Everett, I got a hypothetical question for you. All right. Okay, you've passed away peacefully in your sleep. It was a painless death, and believe me, we'll miss you. You're at the pearly gates, and St. Peter meets you, and he says, before I can let you in, I got one load I need hauled to California and back. You can either take this vintage, fully restored 359 extended hood, or you can take business casual. It's your last haul before you enter heaven. Which one are you going to go with? It's going to have to be business casual. 
<laughs> Are happy. you sure? I don't know. Hey, <laughs> torn. <laughs> hey, either one would be a good ride. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Inquiring minds just wanted to know, so now we know. <laughs> Well, Everett, I know, uh, like most other days, you're under a load. So thanks for uh, shutting it down, unhooking, cleaning it up, juicing the tires. Yeah. And uh, making your way over here to the G-Bats racetrack. I appreciate, appreciate it, buddy. You appreciate guys have it, a bro. safe ride. Oh, yeah. Larry, always good to see you, my friend. You as well, sir. See you soon. Okay. We'll let you get back to it. <laughs> Be good, guys. Yeah. Take care, Everett. You too, man. gang we're back live from csm.com here in Joplin and how about that old Fleener truck can you believe KC makes every ride around in that old rough thing maybe someday they'll fix one up <laughs> that was a good bunch of guys and a fun photo shoot uh, that we had there so it has been pointed out to me that on our TBS trivia question where we gave away the pinnacle seat I failed to announce the correct answer Qualcomm Qualcomm was the answer we're looking for so We've got more trivia coming up right now, and can anybody tell me about what time are we going to do the four state trucks OOIDA drawing for the $30,000? Around 10 o'clock? Yes. 10 o'clock. We're going to draw for the OIDA four state trucks $30,000. That's going to be a lot of fun. Trivia. Item number two is brought to you by our good friends at Hovebilt, made right down there in the central part of Tennessee. When you think of Hovebilt, you think of top end high quality quarter fenders half fenders full fenders even the full radius uh, fenders as well as all the brackets with them well tonight the guys at hope bill have gave us a prize it's about a two thousand dollar package a set of ultra low rider low drop half fenders and with the premium brackets we've got the uh suspension specific so if you're the lucky winner we'll find out what model your truck is what model suspension you're going to get a pair of these fenders shipped to you, the ultra low rider half fenders, and you're going to get all the hooked up brackets that you need to do the install. So our question is, let's see who has been paying attention. On Fleener's Sweet Kenworth, that incidentally is equipped with a stellar set of Oakville retro quarter fenders, what was Everett trucking for? Everett is trucking for blank. Get us your answers. I'll read it again on Fleener's Kenworth, which incidentally had an awesome set of Hope Belt quarter fenders. What was Everett trucking for these days? He is trucking for blank. While we're gathering up our winner, hopefully gathering up our winner, I want to reach out and thank personally Matt and Kyle, the guys down at Hope Belt. When we first pitched this concept of having a live stream and with some fun and games and some cool videos mixed in, Matt and Kyle were one of the first ones to reply enthusiastically, what can we do? We want to be involved. And not only that, they said, we've got some ideas uh, for this trivia. So for the whole night, for that matter. So we have a winner. It's Dolores, Dolores Clem. You have just got a pretty much $2,000 <laughs> set of Hope Belt Ultra Low Half Fenders with all the brackets you're going to need. We'll contact you in the next few days, first of next week, and figure out how we can coordinate all this and make it happen. So, all you viewers, stay put. We've got a lot more trucking TV coming up next. You ready for more calendar trucks? Here we go. Let's announce batch number two for the 2021 calendar. Spot number five is going to go to Nate Lewis from right down the road in Arkansas with his old school International Eagle cab over. Nate likes the large variety and friendly folks at Four State Trucks. Our next pick was Jonathan Deer from Oklahoma with his Freightliner dump truck that's always ready to rock. Jonathan loves the tail kicking truck show that Four State Trucks has.
Cole Bremer and his bride from right here in Missouri take a look at their super cool extended hood Peterbilt. Cole likes the friendly and helpful crew at Four State and the fact he can get both chrome and mechanical parts from one stop at one store. And Laverne Cross from Indiana with his vintage Kenworth Big Bunk W900A, he digs the good prices and great staff at Four State Trucks. Stay tuned for your final round of 2021 calendar trucks. Hey gang, Dan Sweeten and Derek O'Dell here. Hope you've liked what you've seen so far. You know, normally we'd be down here in Joplin with eight or 10,000 of you running around the store slinging parts everywhere. Uh, while we're sad that we're not able to do that here, we are straight pumped to be able to do this four hour live stream. There's a lot of fun stuff going on and we're excited to be able to do it. It's true, we, every year we look forward to, or should I say every two years now, we're always looking forward to everyone coming down meeting people and chit chat with people that we talk to on the phone throughout the entire time but with that said we've got this awesome show going on we've still got a ton of good stuff going on so make sure you stay tuned check this stuff out dan they need to check it out they need to check, check it, it, out. it out stay tuned Hey gang, hey. what's up, man? How you doing? You just can't sit still. You got to spin a tire, don't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, we're here today in Joplin at the G Bats uh, Burnout Pit with Joe, Joey, and Betty Jo Seaman, and they have been heading up the burnouts here at G Bats ever since we've had them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were the first ones to do burnouts. Yep. For you. Yeah. We had kind of been somewhere together, and you all were doing burnouts, and I said, "Man, we got to do that at Joplin." Yeah. And you said. I'll head it up <laughs> and you've done a fantastic job because every year this thing is standing room only 30 people deep elbow to elbow all the way around this thing so you guys usually come down you bring the dishers from Colorado yeah, yeah. Uh, a few other guys come with you yeah, yeah Jimmy Jimmy brings the crew down and mm -hmm. we we've been racing with Jimmy for 25 30 years so, uh-huh uh-huh yeah. and the last two years we brought Mike 
Mike, Mike Bolin. Bolin. Mike Bolin from Kansas with uh -huh. his little Ford and stuff. And, yeah. And he rocks it with that little Ford. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a good drag racer, too, with that truck. We took him out to English County, Jersey, and, uh -huh. and he won out of 1,200 trucks with a little old Ford 238D Can Detroit, you believe so. that? Yeah. It was really cool. It so. just goes to show you, you never know. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> it, it's a driver more than anything. It, it really isn't is. always the $100,000 funded race team <laughs> and race truck that no. wins, but no. nope. we were customers and friends long before we were working together at GBATS. I've known Betty Joe and Joe for a long time. When I first heard about you, I think you were like six years old breaking your leg on motocross or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But this family here, they love diesel fuel motorsports. <laughs> if it's loud, if it'll roll black smoke and make a lot of noise and go fast, it's like sign them up. Uh, I always look back to your red 359, which you actually used to truck in. Yeah, Th that yeah. used to bring the the paycheck home to buy the groceries and make the house payment. Well, we used to we grew up in it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we used to get loads going to the drag races. We'd uh -huh. race in New Jersey, get a load going to Kansas, race in Kansas, <laughs> get a load going out to California and race out in California and then come back and do it all over again. Who does that? I mean, your <laughs> everyday driver is also your race truck and then you hook up to the trailer and go back to work. The Ricky, one year, Ricky the one year we did 13, 13 races. 13 right? races, yeah. Right. Well, country. you didn't bring it today. You brought your uh, newest addition to the race fleet. Yeah. So we're missing old Red. Uh, yeah. I know uh, I really associate you guys with that truck because for so many years, uh, that's what you'd pull in our parking lot and come in and buy a bumper or a fuel filter or something. Yeah. You know, was that kind of deal there. But when I ask you if you would spearhead the burnouts here at GBATS, you know, a lot of people say to have burnouts at a crowded event like ours <laughs> is kind of insane. Uh, but our fans look so forward to it. Like if we pulled burnouts out of GBATS, I think we'd have a bona fide revolt. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I want to say here, you know, you guys do a great job uh, kind of keeping everything flowing and keeping law and order over here in the burnout pit. Yeah. Well, I, I couldn't do it without Jimmy Disher. Me and him work really good together and we keep every try and keep everybody out of trouble, you know. You so. guys do that. I really, uh, it's cool to have the long term relationship we got. I, I don't worry about it. You know, I got 15 other things I can worry about, but I know as far as the burnouts, you guys got it handled. So. Like I said, we've known each other for a long time. You guys uh, are, are friends first and foremost, hardworking family that works together, trucks together, uh, races together. And I can tell you, I mean, you, you, you got a lot of character, man. You guys are, uh, if I call you needing a hand or, you know, likewise, if there's something I can do for you, we always just ring one another up and it has a way of working out. So yeah. thanks for coming down and playing with us today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we can't get 800 trucks and 10,000 people together, but that don't mean we can't have a little fun. Oh yeah. So, yeah. well, I've been talking to you two about doing a burnout with you guys for a couple of years now. So one thing I want to do today is, Joey, it seems like you're the master burnout <laughs> guru. <laughs> uh, so I want to have you tell me like a step by step. And obviously all these viewers are going to know too, you know, oh, like yeah. I'm dying to know, is it 2300 RPM, fourth gear, dump the clutch, grab fifth? You know, I want to know how all that works and we'll kind of get into that. So. I guess you want to get out here and make some smoke and fire? Oh yeah. All right. Sounds good. We'll let you at it. Okay, Joey. So you're the master. Take me to school here. How are we going to do a burnout? Give me the step by step here for no bucks. Okay. With this truck, we got it set up where when the trailer valve on the dash is in, uh -huh. we can use the trolley valve over here for the front brakes on their own. Okay. So trolley valves doing my steer axle brakes. Yep. Gotcha. Pull those down. Uh huh. Go in the sixth gear. Gotcha. And just have at it. Get a little bit of RPM, <laughs> uh -huh. let the clutch out, and uh -huh. the truck does the rest. So once you get things rolling in sixth, you grab seventh. Yep. Are you eighth, grab eighth doing burnouts, or are you staying with sixth and seventh? This transmission, we can't. Uh huh. But with our other truck, I can grab usually eighth and sometimes ninth. If I got it, you. The old red 359 will do yeah. it to it, but okay. Yeah. It's kind of a sixth and seventh day for no bucks here. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yep. All right. And then the park brakes are standard, but yep. as long as this is in. The front brakes work. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. What could possibly go wrong? I oh, mean, yeah. Anybody could do it. Yeah. <laughs> All easy. right. Take me for a ride. All right. <laughs>
Joey, man, I gotta tell you, I am hooked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a burnout truck, I'm gonna be here in 2021, and we're doing this together. All right. <laughs> hey, thanks for the 101, it was yep. a blast. Uh, tell your mom, your dad, everybody, you guys mean so much to GBATS, you're a big part of the success at the show. So you keep doing what you're doing, and we'll see you here next September. We'll be here. All right, man. Thank you. Hey guys, Troy here. Hope you're enjoying the show. These guys put on a heck of a show. It doesn't matter if it's virtual or if it's in person. It's awesome. One thing I didn't do, but I'm out on the road. I did not have my Fred Flintstone outfit with me. Thank you, Linda, for reminding me. But guess what? I have my hat that Brian got me a couple years ago. But wouldn't it be awesome to win 30 grand? Holy cow, what's that person going to do with all that money? That is crazy. Hey, y'all take care. Have a good evening. All right, gang, we're back live from Four State Trucks, and how about I mean, how about those burnouts? <laughs> That's the most fun I've had in a month of Sundays, man. Thanks to Joe, Betty Joe and Joey for coming down and doing that. That was incredible. And I really am hooked. You can ask my wife. That's all I've been talking about since the Sunday we did that. But let's talk just a little bit about Special Olympics. Hey, hey, has anybody seen John with the OIDA train? It wasn't my day to watch the OIDA driver. You gotta find John the OIDA train. Well, back to business at hand. Special Olympics has been a big part of GBATS for a lot of years. Typically, we have a Special Olympics world's largest convoy here at Joplin every GBATS. So truckers pay $100 to be in the convoy, and then we auction off the first 15 positions to lead the convoy. So I'm real proud to say that many years out of the last 10, the GBATS convoy has led the nation in the world's largest by number of trucks. A couple of years, we claimed the largest number of trucks and the largest fundraiser, with some, uh, some weekends being over $100,000 in just a short two days. So it's really incredible how big-hearted uh, you truckers are for the charity. We didn't get to have a convoy this year, although we did have the OOIDA truck and trailer on the lot all day as they came down to hang with us tonight, which was pretty cool. But what we did do is, thanks to uh, the parts manufacturers that you're seeing on your screen now, they donated a lot of premium, high-end, highly sought-after product. They donated it to us for an online auction, a timed event, much like eBay, that started last Friday, and it ended today at 2 o'clock. So... These good providers gave us the parts, knowing 100% of the proceeds were going to go to Special Olympics. That sale is over, and thanks to all you truckers that bid on these products, thank you very much. We were able to raise quite a bit of money this year, even without having the physical world's largest convoy. So, I'm going to give you a report on what the total proceeds were from our online auction. Check, please. Even without the live truck show in Joplin, we were able collectively to almost get $12,000 uh, online 
in a relatively short period of time. So thanks to all you suppliers and parts providers for donating your product. Thanks to every trucker that bid. Now, attention, lucky bidders. The sale ended at 2 o'clock today. We're already fielding calls from you, which is exciting. But here's how it's going to work. Robin Anderson with Special Olympics is going to get a hold of each of you over the course of next week. She'll coordinate payment on that. She'll coordinate getting the parts picked up or possibly shipped to you, whatever you're able to work out. So look for the call from Robin. We'll get your parts to you. We'll get your parts to you as quick as possible. Thanks to everybody. And we've still got the check coming in from CEI for all of our viewers tonight. We have had another uh, affiliate, uh, Mink Sales in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, they're part of the Bostrom National Seat Group. They have also agreed to match tonight's viewership. And our good friends at JNL Contracting have donated $2,500 direct to Special Olympics. So thanks for all. It truly shows how big hearted our great industry of trucking is. Sit tight because we're not done yet. We got more trucking action coming right up. Hey, G Bats family and friends. We're going to miss you all this year. I know you're used to seeing old Galen directing traffic downtown for the convoy parking everybody here. I want you all to enjoy the show. We got a lot of stuff coming up here, a lot of good giveaways. We're still having fun here at G-Bats. We're gonna try to do what we can do this year. So we'll see you all next year in person. Everybody, this is Tony Justice coming to you from East Tennessee. Thanks for tuning in to the G Bats Virtual Truck Show. Man, it's definitely a new world that we're living in, but it's awesome to see everybody stepping up, coming together, and keeping the wheels rolling on this great industry and all these great truck shows that, that we've had to miss out on. Uh, there's a lot of new things going on this year, as, as you guys are uh, very much aware of. And one of the things I'm really excited about is the release of my brand new album called 18 Gears to Life. One of the ones I'm really, truly excited about is actually a duet called Long Distance Love. And I was very, very honored to have a recording artist from Australia, Miss Jane Denham, come in and agree to do uh, the female part of this song. And uh, Jane, man, come on in here and let's talk about this thing a little bit. It's going to be awesome. Hi, everyone. How are you going? Oh, well, here we are at a truck show and I'm in Australia. There you go. <laughs> well, it's really exciting to be on the song. Thank you so much for asking me to uh, be a part of it. And I can't wait for everybody to see it. It's been a lot of fun keeping it under wraps. Yeah, you know, and it's been challenging. You know, we had no idea COVID-19 was going to hit during all this. We we'd planned on being in Nashville together, re recording it at the same time, and uh, and, and we actually recorded it worlds apart and all the communication. It's just definitely been a challenge. But, you know, I mean, we didn't let it stop us. And then here we are and, uh, you know, fixing to to release this song, not not only the video, but the song for downloads, too. So, you know, it just goes to show you that anything's possible when people start working together and overcoming whatever gets thrown in front of us. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think, like you were saying, we we were meant to be filming it and recording it in March this year. I was a week off coming over to America when COVID hit and everything got shut down. And so obviously this project was put on hold, but I think the beauty of what's come out of it, even though it, has, it didn't turn out how we planned, it's made it even more genuine, I think, to the song. You know, here I was I in Australia uh, yeah. filming it away from you and so the video ended up being a little bit different to what we imagined, but it's got a real, I, I, I just think it's fabulous the way it's turned out. And um, so I, I'm in Australia getting filmed and you're in America and um, it's certainly a long distance love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another continent, but um, look, I'm, I'm sure this song's going to really appeal to so many people who live the reality of, of this song that you've written, Tony. And um, yeah, it's just great to be a part of it. Absolutely, you know, and, and, a, and a big thank you and a hats off to the folks at TBS Factoring for, uh, they put, I don't know how much time into this and effort and work and sacrifice and, and it, you know, uh, it's awesome. They've met, they're making all this possible and uh, for them to get behind the song and, and believe in it, it just really boosts our confidence, I know, and I know it does, it does yours as, as well as mine. So, uh, man, we, we just can't wait to to play this thing for everybody. I've been getting to watch the video now, the final edit for about a week. And I'm so excited to, I've just been wanting to share it 
to somebody <laughs> and let them see it, you know, and today's the day. And then thanks to TBS for making that possible. So, guys, we are super excited to let you see right now the brand new single and video clip. Tony? So here it is, the world premiere of Long Distance Love. It's a rainy night in Georgia Heading out to California Counting days till I hold you again Well, it's cold in Colorado They're calling more snow for tomorrow All I hear is lonesome in the wind It ain't easy love Someone who's always on the road, but I take your heart with me everywhere I go. I just call to say I miss you, girl. You're always on my mind. Here we are again tonight in this long distance ride. There's a fire that burns between us
Hey gang, how you doing? Jamie, thanks for coming to Joplin. Hey. Milana, good to see you. Good to see you. Randy, what have you been up to? Just working. Just working. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you, we are really happy that you guys took time out of your very busy schedule, from what I know, uh, to come down here and participate in the, the filming for the GBATS uh, 2020. So it means a lot that you came down here and I know these uh, trucks have took a lot of time and effort to get looking this way, or do they stay this way every day? Not every day. Not every day. <laughs> no, not every day. But we're excited, you know, several of us around here are familiar with y'all because, you know, we're from the Midwest, but we got people watching tonight from East Coast, West Coast, Canada, all over, and they don't get to see your stuff all the time like we do. You're going to tell us about Devilish Ways, your newest build, and Never Satisfied, which we're familiar with this old girl. She's been featured in a magazine or two, yeah. and we've bumped into you all several times out on the show circuit, uh, standing tall and looking good. But before we do that, Jamie, I know you guys run a very successful business up in Springfield, uh, J&L Contracting, and do some trucking. So kind of tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing up there, some of your products and services, and if you have any cool plans for the future that you want to share, now's your time. <laughs> Uh, the future is going to be more like more the same right uh don't don't have immediate plans of growing at all mm -hmm. just trying to keep going what we got going mm -hmm. um we do uh excavating mm -hmm. in probably about four or five midwest states gotcha um we do trucking in all 48 mm -hmm. primary haul specialized oversized dimensional stuff okay. heavy mm -hmm. heavy heavy we have a pretty large dump truck fleet Mm -hmm. So in Springfield, if you're up there and you see a red, shiny red dump truck, it's probably ours. That whole Springfield Branson area is a pretty thriving dump truck uh, business is. center. It is. Yeah. Uh, we get down to Joplin and work a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, we have an office in St. Louis. We do heavy hauling up there every day and mm -hmm. do a lot of dedicated work up there. Right. So we run about 140 employees and just mm -hmm. keep very busy. Yeah, you guys have active. seen a lot of growth in the last five, eight years. Yes, we yeah. have. Yeah. yeah. JNL has been in business. This is our 15th year this yeah. year, 2020. Yep. Yeah. And we went from, you know, a dump truck and a backhoe to 200 pieces of yellow iron and 70 trucks and dump trucks. So we keep pretty busy. Did you grow up in trucking or you just kind of got exposed to it? I've always been an equipment operator, more than a trucker, mm -hmm. but I love trucks. Oh, I, yeah. I always have. And, uh, you know, that G-Bats, I think, was the one that uh, Joplin Peter built, built that Australian truck they had here. That's true. Yep. And that truck really, I really liked it. And that's when we built the contender because uh -huh. after that truck we decided to build the contender and that was i oh. see well guys i haven't really seen devilish ways so we're going to have you tell me about that and it's going to be natural reaction because this is a first for me so before we do that do you want to escape here and go take a break or you yeah. want to stay and talk trucks oh i'll let you guys <laughs> talk trucks <laughs> okay sounds good So, Devilish Ways, tell us, what year is the KW? 2019. 2019. Is it a glider or is it a mission truck? It's an emission truck. Right on. Well, take us through it. Give us the specs, wheelbase, every, everything you know. Everything. <laughs> well, it's got an X-15 Cummins in it. Uh-huh. It's a 13-speed automatic. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's like an auto shift or an ultra shift? Yes. Okay. So, um, 295 wheelbase, uh -huh. 370s in the rear. I got to tell you, aero cabs are cool. I mean, when, from a driver's perspective, I really love them. But when you see the traditional uh, separate cab and sleeper, the flat windshields, yep. I mean, that's old school KW cool. It, it, is, it is a cool truck. Yeah. It we does. put the big hole in it. Yeah. yeah. We, did, we yeah. did big hole the sleeper. Yeah. Every time you do one for a customer, they say, why didn't I do that 10 years ago? Yep. Uh, it's exactly. just, it's a total game changer as that far as... extra four or five inches really gives you a lot of... Everyday room. life is uh, much better with that uh, big opening. And with no cab lights, and it's just streamlined. It's got a real hot rod stance to it. Mm -hmm. Well done by you guys. It started out as a build for an actual customer. Mm -hmm. and we ended up buying it from him, but mm -hmm. they repainted. Painted, repainted the Viper red and they put the orange and the gray stripes mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everything on the truck's hand painted. Um, well, and under the hood looks as good as the rest of the truck. You got a full stainless firewall. Yes, All sir. of your piping's been plated, it looks like. Stainless firewall cover, we made it there mm -hmm. at a friend's, friend's shop there in Springfield. Mm -hmm. and got it put on. Mm -hmm. uh, pulled the motor, painted it like our normal. Yep. Normal oh yeah. Deal. yeah. We designed the firewall cover and built that ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that is so gorgeous. You don't see too many Kenworth firewall covers. Correct. But he's, yeah. I had him do his little small touches and pinstripe, you know. I mean, the back side of the caliper's done. You can't see it, uh -huh. but I know it's there. Yep. Yeah, that's so, hinging to detail. I really like the pinstripe there. It's got, got the old flat glass school, school bus windows uh -huh. upside down. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, painted floor, painted dash. He did all the artwork there mm -hmm. in the floor, too. Mm -hmm. 
And it's but, pretty funny at a show when the guys walk up to it and they open the door and they see the auto shift. Uh huh. They're half of them are just done with it. Uh huh. Yeah. They don't uh -huh. want to look at it anymore. Yeah, you know, if they drove going. it for an hour and a half, yeah. I guarantee you they'd be. That's oh, right. Yeah. That isn't it. that bad. This showed up, and when we was building it for the customer, I made mm -hmm. fun of him. But yeah. Now that we ended up with it, it ain't so bad. <laughs> right, right. So. That's how those things go. Yeah. Well, coming on around here, all custom deck plate, yeah, recessed all, airline box. Yeah. On the back mm -hmm. of the sleeper. Mm hmm. The air box, I we use. We got to have five holes mm -hmm. for the hydraulics, so I mm -hmm. just got that from you and flipped mm -hmm. it around. Sure. We drilled our own holes. Right. Uh, toolbox made locally mm -hmm. in Springfield. Mm hmm. That's a design we came up with. The, the hose, the hose loop. thing mm -hmm. we we i i come up with that i don't know probably about 10 years ago and it works really good for our hydraulic oh it's super sharp yeah, yeah. it takes something significant to hold yeah. those heavy yeah. hydraulic hoses yeah. right yeah. you guys squirted the frame duct plate everything everything man it's got a killer everything. gloss to it everything i like the fact that you didn't chrome nut cover everything out i mean it no. almost looks cleaner being all red yeah it <clears throat> i'm not i'm not big on the nut covers uh-huh I mean, just to make everything clean. Mm -hmm. And this truck was designed totally by Randy. Mm -hmm. He pretty much had total freedom on this one, so this yeah. was all his. Baby. You think he'll ever get the hang of it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the next maybe, one, huh? Maybe. The, hey, not much. Any trucker I know would be proud to ride around in this this KW. Man, it is super sharp. Well done. So. Mm -hmm. Basically, we did stainless lines everywhere we could do stainless lines. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of a clean, simple, mm -hmm. workable. Mm -hmm truck that you know you're not you're not worried to get in it and drive it actually you gotcha. know, actually go enjoy it and we do pull detaches so we got the pad there for the arm half inch plate oh man yeah yeah so and will. then this is all welded and yeah. hand fabricated that's cool everything's yeah. welded together yeah we do all that in-house yep so sharp work guys yeah. looks good Thank you. uh fenders are they hogue belts yes yep like the wide straps i mean they may be factory but they still look cool mm, right yeah right Yep. Oh yeah, three-tone dash, all painted to match the outside. The Larson Group, we use their paint shop facilities. Mm -hmm. They help us a lot. Mm -hmm. We're friends with them. Yep, they got a good reputation they for running good. some fine body shops. Yep. They do a good job, Springfield mm -hmm. and Joplin. So mm -hmm. we, they help us a lot. <laughs> well, guys, this wasn't even supposed to be our main feature, and now I feel like we need to cover it again in the future. <laughs> I mean, you got a whole story here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know Randy, uh, Jamie said you designed this truck and I mean, brother, you nailed it. Thank you. I, I, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change a thing to be honest with you. Thank you. I wouldn't even change the auto shift. <laughs> Let's go on over here. And this is the one that uh, we asked you to bring down. And yep. when I called you, you said, hey, I can bring two if you need me to. <laughs> so the more the merrier. Uh, this one, like I said, it's been around a while. Did you guys build it two and a half, three years ago? No, actually, uh, five. <laughs> I make that mistake all the time. It's been out that long. <laughs> yeah. Yep, you've won about every show circuit you could win with it. Um, it was my very first ever sleeper truck. Okay. That I ever bought. Okay. And uh, we ran it for almost 600,000 miles. Mm hmm. So, wow. Yeah, what's the total miles on it today? Six. 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 620? 630. Yep. So, I can remember the first time I saw it, I think may have been Louisville instead of G-Bats, because, you know, Louisville's every March. We're always in the fall. Yep. But, I mean, there is there is no detail left unturned. I mean, the inside of the sleeper looks as good as the outside of the hood, looks as good as the dash, looks as good as the rear bumper. I mean, you guys, from the sound system to every tiny detail, you, you rocked it out of the park. Yeah, we had about, oh, shoot... There wasn't one shop that did it all. There right. was probably 20 shops. Yes, yeah. You know. That works out really well. Now, what year is uh, Never Satisfied? No, wait. Oh, wait. Yep. Is it Cat Power? No, it's Cummins. It's, an, it's a Cummins ISX, ISX as well? Yep. ISX, yes. 18 speed? Yep. Okay. Um, it was a factory uh, th heavy haul. I see. This was built, it actually was one I, I bought it used with about 80,000 miles on it. Mm hmm. Um, it was built, the guy owned it and hauled military stuff, mm -hmm. everything, so. I really like, I mean, we'll just start talking about some of the, the really cool details. I mean, the Kenworth Keyhole logo grill, you know, matches the air cleaners. I mean, that's always a winning look. Yeah. The American Eagle, you don't see many of them with the rounded outside corner. Those are pretty unique, and it really flows with that Kenworth hood nicely. Yep, and that was the Jones hood that we bought from you. Yep, painted visor instead of stainless, really works nice. 
with red you know some people can say well all you see is red show trucks but it don't matter red makes you come over and want to take a look it, we, we it were pulls told you we over built red in the very when we first heard showing that a red truck will never win anything uh -huh. so you were going to prove so them wrong, proved them wrong. <laughs> yeah, you did it's, indeed it's, it's, it's one everything is a bobtail it's one everything is a combo uh-huh so we were told a detach couldn't win mm -hmm. so we've done we everything that wrong we pulled that you know we've done it we've done very well right you did custom battery and toolbox covers aluminum then painted them to match painted tanks Yep. Everything, the, the cab and the sleeper panels, yep. uh, clear through the cab rack. Bruner's yep. Manufacturing here, a local Joplin company, mm -hmm. built a lot of that for me. Mm -hmm. We'll tip the hood here in a bit and look at the, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking it don't ride this low every day. No. Uh, it may have airbags on the front. Yeah. This is a cool feature. It goes back to that attention to detail. I mean, you got the air cleaner panels, which is A-OK, -okay, but you even took the stripes right through them. Custom billet step plates, yep. they rock. Strapless breathers. I mean, there's stuff you don't notice at first glance. Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole truck's just, uh, it flows all the way through it. Oh, yeah. You know, Davis Brothers in Indiana, they did mm -hmm. the interior. Mm -hmm. That's the part that I took it to them and they did that, the interior. Mm -hmm. And O'Brien had to search the country to find red carpet. Yeah, the interior is amongst the finest I've ever seen. And, uh, I'm like you guys, I've seen a lot of trucks, but this one will not be outdone on the interior. Yeah, and it's got, how many watts of stereo is it having it? About 7,500. <laughs> it, 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 it pounds it, it does great. Yeah. I, I, I suppose it would at 7,500. Yeah. You can outpower concerts, yeah. <laughs> sound systems. We, we, we went to truck shows and shut the, shut the DJ down because, <laughs> you know, he wasn't playing the right stuff. So. Well, Davis Brothers is noted for doing some, some high-end sound systems, and this one's a... Uh, no exception. It's incredible. Super cool. Yeah, Bruner, we sell their line of cab racks and whatnot, and uh, they, do, they do a good job. It's cool to deal with Joplin companies. You know, everybody likes Hometown Proud. Yeah. We had to come up with these custom step brackets here, mm -hmm. which is kind of the Kenworth logo. Oh, yeah. To get up there, because we do have to get up on that frame rail, get in the headache rack. So. Mm -hmm. Extra long fifth wheel slide yep. in your, your line of work. We custom built that. And mm -hmm. I, I forgot how many hours of sanding it is to get smooth mm -hmm. like that. But, yeah. Now these fenders, did you buy them this long or did you have to add on to the they, bottom? They were about that long. Okay. They badass customs of yeah. Indiana. That's, yeah, they came together real nice. Yeah. People don't realize how much layout time is right here in it these is. six fenders. And this truck does work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it pulled a super load this year. Mm -hmm. Wow. It grows to 260,000 load from Ohio to... Yeah. I mean, uh, when we Vegas. were showing it, we had aluminum fifth wheel plate. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Grease, yeah, grease yeah. This one, so. Yeah, here's your evidence, folks, yeah. right here. Yeah, it does, it does work. <laughs> and there's, there's even smudge marks in the kickstand. Yeah. Right, so. hey, yeah. yeah. Is this another? That's a one inch thick plate right oh, there. Oh, wow. Yep. And that, that's one inch thick. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, you know, we added that pad after we started quit showing it. Mm hmm. You know? The billet work is just amazing. All 100% yep. yeah, custom. Davis is, uh, come up with that mm -hmm. brothers and put that on their surprises yeah it has their logo right here yeah yeah and then never satisfied and uh -huh. hard to see it's just kind of it's just a, a beautiful piece that is world class yeah yep. that looks phenomenal and then spencer the handwork guy he painted never satisfied on the back of the force mm -hmm. so we got a little bit of his work in here mm -hmm. so yeah well let's let's tip the hood and we'll take a look under there okay. i'll get the bike you say when randy Well, yeah, as mentioned, you got the airbag on the front suspension, the kit there, and then also the flip bumper. Those are must-haves for any show truck these days. Yes. Yeah, you can put that bumper down on the ground in the grass like we're doing now. Well, when you're when you're getting asked to pull out into the field, you know, in, in mm -hmm. pictures and videos, it's always great to have a flip bumper. <laughs> if I remember right, when the bumper was up, you've got lights all across the bottom of it, too. That's, yep. a, that's a cool... Uh, cool feature for sure well everything's totally dialed in under here i mean painted fan shroud it's all body work smooth uh stripes on the inside of the hood as well as the outside that's a killer effect there 300 hours of hand sanding inside that hood i bet before they ever shot primer see it's things like that uh, uh, nobody i mean myself you unless you know that you don't really dwell on that you think ah they spent a weekend there painting the inside of that hood well under the hood it's amazing. Outside is incredible, but the best part is yet to come. Let's jump up in here and you can show us the inside. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I've seen this truck 10 times, but just wow. It's, 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 it's bright. Yeah. It down the road. Oh, it's not that. I mean, it's like it's just, it's every single thing was analyzed, styled, 
and then that that thought was put into motion i'm like even custom carpet <laughs> to match the stripe pattern i mean where do you see that yeah. nowhere and i will give credit to brian davis and mm -hmm. kevin johnson they, mm -hmm. they just i give them open not open checkbook open reins to, 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 to surprise me well the design yeah. is a winner and they they did that yeah um, yeah the color combination red button tuck on white leather uh, this the halo effect the led halos on the sound system i've seen them on the doors too uh, this thing's as high impact at night as it is in the daytime yes it's just a, it's just it's a work of art yeah you know custom overhead console and it sounds as good as it looks so oh yeah it's uh we were talking earlier about all the body work on the bottom side of the hood i mean you guys sanded all the texture out of all your interior plastic too it uh it looks phenomenal. I mean, it's 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 flawless, guys. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You yeah, bet. It's done. It's done well everywhere it's ever been. Uh huh. You know. These are our Rockwood door sill plates, aren't they? Um, I think so. I think those were custom made by they? Yeah. Uh, a shop in Indiana. I got you. They they look sharp. It's like chrome chromed billet. Yep. He made yeah. matching pedals, but we took them off to for working. working it. Yep. So yep. So there's matching pedals and. There's another tidbit. There's your fact. Pedals are gone because we're a working truck. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Dustin's, Dustin's took this thing several loads since we've had it back off the, you know, it's, truck can only show for so long and then you got to put it back to work or sell it or this truck bleeds JNL. Yes. Everybody knows it. Yeah. I, you know, I'll probably never end up selling it unless somebody just offered it to me, but yeah, it's just, you know, you don't get more patriotic than this truck. No. And you know, these are all of our company colors. That's what we, we you know. Phenomenal job, guys. It's love a, it. Yeah. We, we love it. It's a great truck. Jamie, never satisfied is a heck of a truck, man. You guys, the whole crew, hats off, man. You guys knocked it out of the park on this one. Thank you. Yep. Well, you know, before we go, JNL, JNL Contracting, is it Jamie and what's the JNL stand for? Well, the J is my son Jack, uh -huh. who's a freshman in college. I see. And the L is my daughter Lauren, who's a junior in high school. So it's after the kids. It is. Yep. yep. There's an interesting factoid that yep. I didn't even know. Yep. We're we have a very big family business uh-huh so yep i got my cousins my brother-in-law i got a lot of people in the mm -hmm. business so, yep. yeah i find uh we've done a lot of these show truck walk arounds for tonight and that pretty much rings true at every one of them it's uh, the whole family's invested in the company uh everybody's pulling a certain amount of the weight and you know that's a big key to success is that family unit uh, behind you and having your back when you can't uh, right. carry the whole load so oh, yeah. Well, man, we appreciate your friendship, your business uh, through the years. Really appreciate you taking part tonight, and uh, we'll see you at the next GBATS. All right, All right man. Thank you. You bet. Take care. Yep. All right, gang, we're going to do a personality profile here on Mr. Jamie Williams. Jamie, first thing that pops in your mind, what's your favorite NFL team? Chiefs. What's your favorite brand of pickup truck? Chevrolet. Favorite classic rock band? ACDC. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. What's your favorite news channel on TV? There isn't one. <laughs> Agreed. What's your favorite brand of farm tractor? Case Age. Apple pie or homemade ice cream, what's your best choice? Apple pie. <laughs> and the big one, what's your favorite chrome shop? Hmm. The Petro. Did he just say what I thought he said? All right, take two. And Mr. Jamie, your favorite chrome shop? Four stage trucks. <laughs> and that's more like it. Hey, this is Cody with the Fab Shop, Four State Trucks. Glad to see you guys are tuning in despite the unfortunate circumstances. Stay tuned, a lot more exciting truck and TV coming your way and we look forward to seeing you next year, September 2021.
All right, and we are back. <laughs> How about that segment, folks? Man, that's some good stuff. I hope you're enjoying it. How about the Tony Justice and Jane Denham? That's a world premiere for that music video right there. So thanks, Tony, and a special thanks to our friends just down the road in Oklahoma City at TBS Factory. Man, that was good. And how about j &L? Mr. Jamie Williams. I ask him for one truck, he's gracious enough to bring two. Then, get this, I sprung the choke scene on him. I said, hey, what do you think about th doing this? Immediately, he said, let's try it. No hesitation. Awesome guy, a lot of fun. Every photo shoot seems to have a story behind it, but we really enjoyed the time there with the JNL crew. So, next up, we got trivia here. Sponsored by our good friends at Brunner Fabrication, not only made in USA, made right here in Joplin. Now, when you think of Brunner, most of us are familiar with them. You think of a premium line of toolboxes and a high-end premium custom cab rack. Get this, this, this folks is a trivia prize. Yes, I'm not pulling your chain. Serious, this is a four-door solid aluminum, polished stainless door, I mean, this is a Cadillac of a cab rack. A Brunner cab rack is what the big boys put on their trucks. So, for giving us a one-word answer to our upcoming trivia question, you are going to win this rack from our friends just up the road at Brunner. So, here's your question, and it goes back to the JNL video you just watched. So, on JNL's phenomenal Never Satisfied Kenworth, which incidentally is equipped with a show-stopping Brunner rack. How many watts of power is the stereo system? I'm going to give it to you one more time. On the JNL Kenworth, with their awesome Brunner headache rack, in their red Kenworth, how many watts is the stereo system? Now listen, Kevin and you guys up at Davis Brothers, you are disqualified from answering. You cannot participate. Because <laughs> I got a feeling you, uh, you know real well how many watts. But... While we're kind of calculating our winner here, special thanks to Joe, Barry, the whole crew over at Brunner. When we asked them to get involved in trivia, we had no idea, no idea whatsoever that they were going to kick in a prize that's nearly worth $5,000. So if you know the answer to how many watts on the stereo, let's get it turned in, and this cab rack could be yours. It's looking like we have a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Dave McKinney, you just got this awesome Brunner rack. The answer was 7,500 watts. 7,500 watts. Wait a minute. Do you think Dave's a member of OOIDA? Is Dave McKinney a member of OOIDA? Yeah. yeah. I have no idea. I bet OOIDA can tell me. <laughs> okay. Thanks for stopping in, babe. All right, folks. Sit tight. We've got a lot more shows still yet to come. We'll be right back. All right, hey everybody, how y'all doing? Glad you all have tuned in. Can't wait to see who it's gonna be with that big winner this year. I hear it's $30,000 worth of parts. Everybody knows we can't be close, but we wanna be, all right? Thanks a lot for tuning in, y'all. Have a great time with it. Hope to see you next year. All right, folks, we're road tripping through Nebraska. Last night and today, we saw miles and miles of cornfields here in Nebraska. Over the decades, we've made a lot of great friends and some phenomenal customers up this direction. The hospitality up here is second to none. Today, you're gonna to get to experience some of that firsthand as we go over to Lincoln Chrome, and they're gonna show us how your Lincoln exhaust stacks are made. Hey, we're right here in front of Lincoln Industries, Lincoln Chrome Plating. 
Before we go in and meet Josh, check out what's over my shoulder here. This eagle was made years ago by one of their longtime VIP employees. The rumor goes that he made that all out of scrap metal. Talk about vision and art coming together. Now that's cool. Josh! Hey, Brian, how's it going, Good man? Good to see you again, man. Thanks Me for too. having us up for this no, tour. No problem whatsoever. I appreciate you guys coming down and checking out what we do here. You know, we sell a lot of truck parts at Four State Trucks, but your exhaust line <laughs> is one of our big five. So today's a big day for us. It's a big day, I hope, for everybody that's watching. And when we think of Lincoln, I mean, of course, you guys make exhaust, bumpers, a full line of stainless accessories, uh, visors. But today, every trucker wants to know, how are my exhaust pipes made from start to finish? So you got to show us that today. Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll go in and check out how we fab it, polish it, plate it, and get it all pretty and out the door. Let's do it. you got to introduce us to some of the crew as well. Definitely. We'll have you guys meet up with a few of the guys in each department, get an understanding of what they're responsible for and what they do. Well, let's get on in there, and you can show us how it's made. Definitely. All right, we stepped into Josh Paisley's office here at Lincoln real quick to kind of find out a little backstory about Lincoln Industries, Lincoln Chrome Plating, and how it all ties together. Now, I know, Josh, from our perspective at Four State Trucks, we think of Lincoln as the exhaust, bumper, and stainless guys. But that's on an aftermarket big rig level. You guys, as a corporation, do a lot of original equipment stuff for Packard, for Harley-Davidson, and others. Tell us a little bit about company history and how all that kind of came about. We've been around since 1952, and it was owned from Dale LeBaron, which was mm -hmm. Mark's dad. And Mark LeBaron currently owns it, and that's mm -hmm. his daughters, Katie and Cassie, work here. So it's a family-owned business in Lincoln, Nebraska. Started kind of as a mom-pop type plating shop and then just continued to evolve and grow from that point forward. It used to be named Lincoln Plating. Mm -hmm. uh, when I joined the company in 2007 it was right around the time we changed to lincoln industries because we didn't want to just be known as a plating company we i remember a lot 2007 of yeah. i remember 2007 <laughs> and you're right for years you guys were lincoln plating so we went ahead and just rebranded under lincoln industries and then september 2008 we launched the brand lincoln chrome mm -hmm. uh, the initial reason of why we launched the brand back then is we were an oem provider for stacks mm -hmm. so we had the equipment to bend it we had the equipment to polish it and mm -hmm. we have the equipment to plate it sure and so it really kind of was a no-brainer at a certain point to launch your own product line into the aftermarket mm -hmm. side the funny thing with a lot of the industries that we talk about are like the motorcycle industry first thing somebody does when they buy one mm -hmm. usually pop the exhaust off and put an aftermarket one on you got to first thing yeah, yeah. it's like if you buy a peterbilt you got to rip the visor stacks and bumper off put an aftermarket on <laughs> yeah and it's the same thought process so, mm -hmm. okay we're an oem provider of a lot of that stuff but then we might as well provide a premium full-on exhaust kit that, that that people are asking for a lot of the things we'd get is based on driver input mm -hmm. uh that's we come in and say okay well that 90 degree elbow could you make that one piece all the way up to the top bracket Heck yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. And we can plate it. And it makes us a little bit different than what's out there because a lot of people can't plate an 82 inch like length mm -hmm. elbow. But overall, we just want to continue to make the best product we possibly can and make sure that we're meeting the expectations. When somebody's mm -hmm. spending their hard earned money, you want to make sure they're happy with what they get and make sure it's going to last for quite some time on the truck, mm -hmm. along with growing uh, with the help of you guys. Mm -hmm. and, and overall, just keep keep working on the aftermarket side, which is where I'm part of. Well, we've been working with you since you launched the exhaust line in 08. Uh, we're big fans of the Run American, Buy American campaign. You guys kind of wave that flag uh, everywhere you go, which is, which is truly admirable. I mean, a great bunch of people here uh, in Lincoln at the factory. I know you guys, as you said, since day one, since 08, you've been hitting the truck show circuit, getting feedback, getting your name out there, interacting with drivers, shop owners, chrome shops like us, to where you've really grown Lincoln Exhaust to one of the premier brands out there. I mean, when a guy wants top shelf exhaust, more times than not, he's asking for Lincoln Chrome. You know, the product speaks for itself. I mean, it looks phenomenal. You're going to show us today uh, a lot of the reasons why it looks so phenomenal. It's got a great warranty, but it's really the people behind the company. I mean, you guys are a company of character. You say what you do. You do what you say. You keep everything above board. I've got to say we've got a long list of vendors that we uh, buy from at Four State Trucks. You guys are an absolute pleasure to deal with. So I've got no reason to think that if you don't keep doing what you're doing, you guys someday will totally dominate uh, the exhaust uh, market. But enough of that. Today we're here for exhaust. So we've got to get out there and you got to show us how a stack is born uh, through the process and how it goes in the box and eventually ends up 
on our shelf and in somebody's hands and on their truck. Yeah, let's go check it out. And I'll get you in front of a lot of the guys that know a heck of a lot more about it than I do. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, first stop in the stack building process is uh, metal fabrication, where we take it from the raw pipe you see behind me to the finished good, ready to send over to get polished and plated. JW, you've been doing this a while, haven't you? A little bit, yep, a <laughs> little bit. Well, when it comes to Lincoln Chrome, you guys do four inch, five inch, six inch, seven inch, eight inch, I can see these, what are they, 20 foot sticks? Yep, yep, we've got some 20 footers in here. That's yeah. how we get the raw tube in. Give us the three minute version. How are we gonna go from here to what we've seen in those pre-bent elbows ready to ship over to polishing? Yes, sir. Well, what we get, we have our trucks come in. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the hoist to take them off the truck, obviously. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the 20 foot sticks stacked up here. Mm -hmm. They go through a hem saw where yeah. we cut them down the length that's manageable for the bender. Okay. Once the bender takes care of it, we cut the head down to the right proportions. Mm -hmm. uh, we get it informed. We weld it if needed, such as the big elbows that you see, the mm -hmm. eight inch stacks coming out mm -hmm. those semis. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it just uh, gets plated out the door. Mm -hmm. I know to deal with that many size pipes and that many elbow configurations, it takes a ton of tooling. I mean, you had a rack over there, 80 foot long, 25 foot tall, full of tooling jigs. I mean, people don't realize the investment it takes to bend up a 45 or 60, 70 dollar elbow. Definitely. It's really, uh, really something to think about. Well, let's see something in process. Can you take us to where maybe we're making a top stack or an elbow? Yep, let's do it. Okay. Vendors go through and take care of that aspect. We've seen the welders go through. Now we come over to the boxing station. So our boxing station, obviously, we've got a lot of parts that go out to the main plant to get polished and chrome plated. Uh -huh. um, you can see that in this box, that's those elbows that we talked about earlier. The nice smooth transition there. Mm -hmm. We've got the nice smooth weld, mm -hmm. and it's a quality product that's going out the fast shop. So. JW, I gotta thank you for the tour. This was uh, informative, and this is step one of our Lincoln How It's Made exercise. That's correct. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So we just stepped into the polishing room here. Now, building these stacks from start to finish, every bit of it's hard work, but these guys bear some of the heaviest part of the workload. Polishing these things is very physical, makes for a long day, but that's what it takes to turn out a great pipe like they do here at Lincoln Chrome. Let's check it out, Josh. Let's go. the floor at Lincoln Industries and we've got a couple of the guys from the metal fab polishing department and without them Lincoln pipes would not come out as gorgeous as they do so fellas tell us who you are and what goes on on the other side of that door well, my name is Jeremy Schwebke uh, I do the training and process control for this department mm -hmm. uh, what I do is try to help make sure these operators are getting the best finish they do for mm -hmm. all the product we do in here so we start off with a raw tube we take out all defects, imperfections, and stuff to get it ready for plating. Plating doesn't look good if it doesn't come through this department. That's what they say. <laughs> I have you, to say it all the time. It's like, this is an art. It, it, it takes a lot of work to do what they do. And, you know, we're, focused on, we're focusing on exhaust today, but in essence, you guys polish everything over here, don't you, to a large degree, the bumpers, the other components. Yeah, so Nick, we, we just witnessed a little bit of the polishing a, a large pipe. How many of those you got flowing through, or how many do you think you're doing a day? Roughly 30 to 50 a day, depending on the size. Yeah. And that is not an easy job. No, it's dirty, <laughs> but I like it. It's an art form. 
Well, I guarantee you, every customer of ours that goes home with a Lincoln set of pipes, they like it too. They appreciate what you do. I know, uh, you know, sometimes probably we got to give credit where credit is due, but you guys are a big part of what happens here. What do you think is your favorite part to polish or take care of? Or it's got to be or... these big uh, custom T pipes. I mean, it's just got to be. <laughs> it's like I hate those things. I hate those things. Now, uh, some of the, the I like the long things. Mm -hmm. Like, like you guys videotape. Mm -hmm. It's a little more finesse. Yeah. Yeah. Some of it's got to be a bit of a self challenge to you, it is. like a game of golf. It's like, how good can I get at this? It is. It yeah. Is. Nice. Yeah. All right, guys. Man, that was interesting. Thanks for showing us what you do over there. No problem. No. Thanks for coming out, and watching us. You got it. Uh, go over to line 38, and we're gonna go check out Kyle over here and see what he has to say about how he plates these things. Sounds good to me. Oh, well, look at that, buddy. Hey. This is Kyle. Gosh. This is hey, Brian. Kyle. Brian, nice to meet Thanks you. Thanks for having us. You betcha. Glad to have you here. We've been plating these on multiple different lines since the launch of the business to this. So mm -hmm. line 38 was developed four years ago. Four, yeah, four years Fairly ago. new in yeah. the yeah. scheme of things. The line well, 38 was built for what? Well, primarily to be able to focus on this long stack. The uniqueness here is the fact that you can plate it vertical instead of laying down, which is probably what most other platers do on yep. exhaust. We can go up to 72 inches that we can run vertical. Okay. When you get past that, you've got to put a little bit of a tilt on it. Mm -hmm. But when we started, as Josh knows, we ran the long pipe completely horizontal, mm -hmm. and that just allowed stuff to set on there. Well, when you're somewhat vertical, it doesn't give it as much of a landing zone, and so with the agitation that's in there, it's got more potential to fall off of there and minimize that for us. Well, why don't you show us kind of the high points of line 38 here? Absolutely. Try to not get my guys way or they'll holler at me. <laughs> but you were looking at here the incoming pipe. I think you guys got to go see polishing. We did. Um, so you got to see how they handle it and get it to us. Mm -hmm. um, they transport it down here. These parts are polished on a by demand basis. Sure. So we take it, we've got an individual racking system for all the different pipe, which allows us to minimize any contact zone exteriorly. It comes into the three different loading stations here. Then we punch the recipe in tells it the length, the diameter, the quantity. The computer then generates mm -hmm. the appropriate mm -hmm. voltage and mm -hmm. amperage and mm -hmm. takes it through the whole cleaning process. I send a, a raw piece of pipe off, like you see here behind you, and about two hours and 40 minutes later, it comes back looking like, like these elbows nice. that, that Nate's pulling out for uh -huh. us. That is impressive. These guys are the ones that are impressive with it. Like, <laughs> I know there's a lot of automation here, but there's a lot of manual, a lot of tribal knowledge to help this stuff continue to excel and grow and develop and it's it's been and, pretty awesome and it's physical too that's why i stand back and <laughs> point out what needs to happen you see these guys i mean they're holding that pipe up those are 50 inch eight inch diameter pipe you right. know so they're not light how many loads do you think you guys do in a shift well if we're running full which we like to because that keeps our efficiency up we get about 72 loads per shift so uh, with the four hoist system that we've got, that allows us really to maximize our plating time and keep parts moving. to do the plating video. Yep. So give us like the three minute version. You put the raw part on the rack. It's gonna pick it up, bring it up here. You've told me the first tank is gonna be like a caustic soap yep. to clean everything. Yep. And then what happens from there? You go from the caustic soap, you go to an electro cleaner. Okay. It goes through the rinse. It goes to an electro acid. It goes to a rinse. Then it goes back to the electro cleaner again, it goes to a rinse, goes to the hydrochloric, which actually preps that material to be able to receive the, the nickel. Okay. Then it'll go down to the end of the line, go into the semi-bright nickel, mm -hmm. spends its 45 minutes, I think it is there. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into the bright nickel, which is about 20 minutes. 
Then it goes to the microporous nickel, which is that final level of nickel, which gives us even more protection. Mm -hmm. Brings it back down here, hits the uh, nickel activator, mm -hmm. which allows the nickel to receive the chrome. Then it goes into the chrome, through the rinses, and back out and out the door. Wow. A lot don't, of bus stops. Don't in quote me on that, but I'm 98% <laughs> sure that's all the tanks. Again, multiple rinses, um, different times and voltages included in there, but, but that is the process. Josh, I spotted these going by, and I tell you, when it comes to these exhaust clamps, you can't make enough of them. They're like Lay's potato chips. If you make 50, we want 100. If you make 100, we want 200. Yes, that's for sure. I mean, they are going through and very fast, very quick, and we got plenty of them. How many of these can we rack per load, Kyle? 60. We can yeah. do 60 load. You stop and think, every truck's gonna need at least four of them. Some of them are gonna need six if it's a Kenworth. Yep. And uh, these clamps are always highly sought after, and sometimes, believe it or not, they're short supply. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kyle, yeah. we need more well, clamps. Turn up the power. <laughs> we do what we can. We keep thinking it through, but you know how things are. Everything's been moving real well lately, and that's been pretty awesome. These guys are buzzing I through love these, these things. things. <laughs> But they are beautiful when they, they come out. That's you guys one thing make a that's fine nice. clamp. There's a lot of options out there on the market, but you guys, the fitment, the finish, the, the hardware that comes with them, there is a difference. Okay, we appreciate it. That's these guys doing that stuff it has nothing to do with me whatsoever. No, hear that from our customers. Yep. <laughs> we package the product right over here. So he's checking the pin yep. stamp on yep. there and the, make sure all the proper information's in there before he runs it out of here. Josh, I gotta tell you, after doing the tour today, I just thought I knew how a stack was made. This has been interesting. Man, the length you guys go to to ensure quality has been impressive. Yeah, it's definitely uh, more than what you think, especially through the plating process and the artwork on the polishing side of things, all the way from the art on the fab side. These guys really care about what they do and that definitely shows. Noticeable difference. Your people say a lot about the company. The product speaks for itself. Well, thanks a bunch for letting Four State be part of the Lincoln Chrome product line. We're proud to sell it down there in Joplin and hopefully we're doing you a good job. Looking forward to many years to come. Heck yeah, definitely. Well, we appreciate you letting us partake in the Four States family and uh, <laughs> wish we could be at GBATS this year, but you know how that goes. Hey, this has but, been fun, though. Yeah, I appreciate it. We'll uh, see you next time. Yeah, definitely. See ya. Hey, it's Josh here in the engine cooling department. It's been a pretty rad show so far, hasn't it? Yes, that was a pretty punny joke. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I just wanna say thanks for tuning in. It's been pretty exciting. I know it's a little bit of a bummer we're not able to meet up here in person, but we're excited for next year. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be action packed, it's gonna be more G-Bats than you've ever had come in 2021. So be excited, stay tuned for what's coming up next. I'm sure it's gonna be more cool stuff. All right, thanks guys. Woo! Hey, it's always fun to potentially share useless information. Well, what we got for you now is behind me is Memorial Stadium, where the Cornhuskers play college ball. On game day, when that stadium's full, this is officially the third largest city in the state of Nebraska. Omaha, Lincoln, Memorial Stadium. There you go, folks. Take it for what it's worth.
Hey, it's Brian the Boss Man, and we're coming to you live from Pandora, Ohio. Hey, everybody, I'm here today with Mr. Dan Radabaugh, and Miss Pam has let you have her truck to come down here and make this little uh, film for us. So I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come down and do this. It's gonna be fun. All right, appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate coming. Obviously, the truck is quite notorious. I mean, this truck's well-known all over the Midwest. Uh, you're obviously into hauling livestock, and it's a 2016 Peterbilt Pride and Class. Correct. You were telling me the story earlier. You actually didn't special order the truck. Uh, Miss Pam found it. Uh, at a stocking dealer. Kind of tell us how that went down. Well, she's sitting at her desk one day and kind of, hey, come here, look at this picture. And I was busy working and uh -huh. another day went by and she said, get over here and look at this picture. Uh -huh. And she's got friends, you know, that's been in uh, mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. So she's been awareness, mm -hmm. a person of awareness. Mm -hmm. and I saw it, I thought about it. Perfect truck, yeah. the perfect truck. Yeah. We just gotta go buy it. Well, it's not only a great looking truck, it's immediately associated with everybody that sees it uh, due to Pam's passion and your guys' uh, good work for the charity of uh, breast cancer awareness. Now, it's got all the right specs. I mean, being a pride in class, what do you got for engine, tranny, rear ends? It's got a Pat Car motor, mm -hmm. uh, 18 speed transmission, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 305 rear ends. Oh, she'll stroll pretty good, I oh, bet. Yeah. yeah, got some highway gear. Yes. Yeah, and then you teamed it up with, uh, I was looking at the data tag on your Wilson livestock trailer. It says 6 of 2020. Does that make it a 2021? Yes, sir. I figured as yes, much. Yes, it does. They keep cheating that yeah. further and further. So yeah. we're actually here filming in 2020 with a 2021 trailer. That's awesome. Yeah, we've had it for about three months. She's mm -hmm. hauled mm -hmm. oh, quite a few pit loads of pigs with it. Right. She just... Happens to be under the weather today and can't be here with us. We sure wish she was, but uh, we're going to give her a phone call here at some point and let her know we appreciate her letting you have her truck for a day. <laughs> uh, she's probably sweating bullets at home, <laughs> knowing you're out cowboying around in this thing. That's right. Pam, what's going on? Not much, Brian. What's going on with you? Well, you know, as fate would have it sometimes, I'm down here on location getting ready to film your truck. And we've had this on the schedule for on the calendar for a couple of weeks and lo and behold something came up and you couldn't make the trip. Yes, sir, you're right. Wish I could have been there to do it. Oh man, us too. But we've got Dan here and I'm really shocked that you turned him loose with the keys to your old pink three eighty nine today. Yeah, it was a tough choice, but I had to do it. You never know. <laughs> but he better look after it. Oh, I assure you, he is. He is. He's doing a great job. And uh, we are a little bummed that you couldn't be here. I mean, everybody out there on the road associates this truck with Miss Pam. So we're going to make the best of it, but I want you to know we're missing you down here. I miss being there. <laughs> hey, tell us real quick, you know, the truck speaks for itself. I mean, it's a great looking Peterbilt. You've got an awesome Wilson trailer behind it. Tell us a little bit about how it came to pass that you put the uh, breast cancer awareness theme uh, on the side of your truck. What led you to do that? Well, 34 years ago, there was a lady that helped get me into livestock hauling, and she's three-time survivor of breast cancer. My best friend's mom, she was three-time breast cancer. She succumbed to the disease and passed away. So it's basically in honor of them, too, and I've had other friends and other people close to me that have had the disease. I basically, every mile I run, I want to bring awareness to breast cancer. I'm in a male-dominated industry. We have women and men out here. I want them to stop and think about it. Guys don't realize that they can also have breast cancer, and they think just because they're men, they can't get it. But if they got a strong history, family history of it, they really need to get checked. So this is my opportunity to bring the awareness to the men who, of course, you know, we're the cowboys out here, and we're rough and tough. Nobody wants to admit that they could get breast cancer. So, yeah, as long as I'm making someone smile and people are seeing that ribbon and they start thinking about breast cancer, I know I've done my job. Oh, you're definitely doing your part. I mean, it is a, a big problem on a national level, and we all are out there doing everything we can in hopes for a cure. So, 
you keep doing what you do, moving that livestock, uh, running this uh, great looking truck all over the upper Midwest, and we'll see you down the trail at the next truck show, maybe. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. A lot of people we come into contact with in our line of work, you know, trucking, truckers, all things trucks, it's generational. It's like their granddad did it, their dad did it, and now they're doing it. But you actually were the first one in your family to kind of get into the trucking thing. Tell us when that started. You're going to give up your age, but tell us how all that came to pass. Well, as a young man, there was an awful lot of livestock raised in our area. Uh huh. A lot of guys had straight trucks, but there was a particular guy that had a, a fleet of trucks. Mm -hmm. And then one of my great friends that I went to school with, his dad worked there, I and I got to hang out. Uh -huh. I got to go on a trip now and then. Uh -huh. And then I got into high school, like, this is what I'm going to do. Right, you knew. I knew. Uh -huh. And my mom was a college teacher. Uh -huh. She wasn't very happy. Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> They did. never are. When yeah. you mention the word trucks, but you know, about 15 years later, they usually get over it. Yeah, so there happened to be a particular <laughs> fellow that wanted to sell out, and mm -hmm. we made a deal, and mm -hmm. here we are today. Been going and growing ever since. since 1976. Wow. And uh, all based out of Ohio, you run several states. You was telling me even, at, you know, some cases take you clear out to the West Coast. Right. Oh, yeah. Doing cattle and pigs on occasion. Is mm -hmm. it about 50-50 or more yeah, so? Yeah, about, well, some weeks it's more than other, than it, uh -huh. but yeah, for the most part. Right, right. You're out in our neck of the woods over there at the Kansas feed yards from time to time. Yep. We hear about you guys rolling around out there. Yeah. So, well, let's walk around the truck. Obviously, you know, the Pride and Class is a highly sought after model. Uh, that Peterbilt came out with and uh, really look cool with all the custom features that are associated with this model of truck. But we'll just kind of start around the front here and you can kind of tell us different things that you guys have done. Obviously you did all the cab and sleeper skirts. They look really cool. Air cleaner lights both sides. Yeah, Visor well, and the door chops all matches up real yeah, nice. Yeah, we added that. We added the turn signal out here. Mm -hmm. We put your uh, exhaust system on here. It's looking good. <laughs> it's sure looking good. Yeah. I like how you went clear lenses everywhere. I yeah. mean, the amber lenses are completely gone. So many people kind of stop halfway through the project, but cab lights, signals, everything looks good. You were telling me about uh, the logo that you guys came up with. Miss Pam took your company logo and then put it in the pink ribbon. Exactly, yep. She's she, got class, folks. She, she surprised me with that. <laughs> She's yep. got an eye for art. That looks really good. Yep. We'll see more of that later, I think. Yeah. Got the boxed-in bumper. The only thing we need to come up with, we need to get rid of those amber bulbs in there. Yep, I think we can handle that. Okay. Uh, one thing cool about the Pride and Class was they had the factory louvered grill with the side vents. So that's kind of their distinguishing mark. Yours has the, the polished-out front fenders, which is ultra cool. Uh -huh. How many miles you got on it now? It's 300 and some odd miles. The speedometer went bad. We got a new one in there now and it's uh -huh. reading like 77,000. I uh -huh. got to think back when the other one went bad, but I think it's got a total of over 300,000. 300,000. You could have told me 30,000 and I'd have fell for it. She <laughs> takes good care of this thing. Yes, yeah, she does. Yep. And it's a full emission truck. I mean, you're 48 state legal, carb yep. compliant, all the good stuff that we need to be these days. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. We'll have to get in the interior there because I know that's one of the highlights of the truck is what uh, what she's been able to do to the interior. And we just redid this ribbon. Mm -hmm. We decided to put fight like a girl on it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna admit to fight like the girl. That was your idea. <laughs> oh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, good touch, uh -huh. good touch. Claim it, it's yours. Okay. Polished out tanks, yep. custom, I like the in-the-frame deck plate stainless instead of the traditional kind that sits on top. Uh -huh. uh, works real good with the, the light box and the fenders and everything. And someday I'd like to get them hidden, mm -hmm. but right now we don't. Your air hoses, like yeah. maybe run them through the back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a, a, a good touch. Put that on your list of things to do someday. <laughs> yeah. We were talking earlier, you know, it's never done. Right. And about the time you get it all done, you'll want to tear it all down and go a whole different direction. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, well done to both of you. Stainless single hump fenders with all the shape mount brackets. Hogue belts, it looks like. Yep. Yep. Whoever put those on knew what they were doing. They look nice and symmetrical on there. What's on the back end of the truck? 
That's a custom rear center panel. It's like extra deep. Yep. Yep. And I just I I put new lights on the on the back side. Oh yeah, okay. Same way with this uh, the panel up here in the front. Mm -hmm. So we got as many lights shining forwards as we do backwards. So she, okay. right now she's got the whole. Oh yeah. And they're dual revolution lights. So you can flip a switch so and they it. all go to pink. Yep. Yeah, and the, our angle coming around, we missed the uh, the filler panel underneath the fuel tank yeah, there. And on, on the back side, I yep. I put more lights on oh, it. Oh yeah. And then yeah. she has the lights up on her her bumper uh -huh. that shine back this way. So we got uh -huh. the whole underneath glowing. Oh yeah. And like I said, then we can change them to pink. Mm -hmm. Well done. And this Wilson, I mean, it is loaded out. Got the stainless front, and has it got the stainless rear? Yes, sir. Yeah. They make it. They make a fine trailer, man. That thing is kind of like every cattle hauler's dream. <laughs> well, let's run on around the back of this thing. I th I tell you what I want to do. I think there's a mystique with most people that haven't been around cattle and big trailers. Uh, what goes on in there? What's all the trap doors and gates and escape hatches? We may get up in there later and have you show me around. Okay. Give me a walking tour. All right. We can do that. I've got a cattle trailer or two, but mine are like 1990s vintage. They're not uh, all the latest and greatest, and they have came a long way. These Wilson's got an absolutely phenomenal interior. We have a, we have a switch in here that can raise that back axle up when we're not you loaded. Lift it up. Yeah, right yeah. on. You equipped her out with toolboxes. Extra lights down the full length. Yeah. I forget. I, I used to know exactly how many extra lights we have, but right You're now, past all that. Ah, I got 114. Yeah. <laughs> and the back of the trailer, man, it is like my favorite angle of this trailer is looking at it from the back. Uh -huh. uh, that is cool the way you guys did the art. And I mean, that's time consuming on that hingeable folding door. That's uh, a it's, lot it's of hours a, right there. It's a very workable door. Yep. Yep. Luckily, she hasn't scraped it up anywhere <laughs> and She's... i see pam's got a hold of the mud flaps with her paint pen yeah yeah you were telling me the stripe around the top header you just did that recently yep yeah that's a and nice I touch just, i just brought it around to the back uh-huh i'm not sure exactly what else i want to do here yet but where well, it's a work in progress she is a working trailer too yep yeah disc brakes huh yep wow i yeah. guess i should know that but uh, you know, I, it, commonplace now is disc brakes on the new trucks. But I never even thought about a trailer being equipped with them. Yeah, I started getting them uh, oh, maybe three years ago. Yeah. Wow. I need to read more magazines. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a Wilson, and so it's a 53 foot. 53 spread foot. axle, yep. 102. Just a double deck. I mean, you do haul some pigs, but you don't haul only pigs. Right. So you just got the double deck. Yep. You got your uh, winter side kit at home? Yep. Yeah, it just slides in here and goes yeah. in behind everything. Yeah. So it's easy to remove. And Is all yours numbered? Like on mine, I had to make it, so I have every piece numbered around the trailer. Oh, oh yeah, So yeah. I can get it all in the right, exactly. uh, right spot. It's kind of a pain. Like when you finally get it put in, you don't ever want to take it out. Because <laughs> it took you all Saturday afternoon to put it in. Yep. I was looking at your porch light earlier. We didn't really hit on that, but uh, when you did that stripe down the side, you brought it down around the porch light. It looks awesome. Well, it's like I said, it's just something more that I'm trying to do to it to make it look good for, for Pam. Oh, that's it. That's it. Well, let's jump up in the inside and you can show me around in there. I know that's where Pam spent a lot of her focus. <laughs> Well, when I think of Pam's truck, believe it or not, the first thing I think about is all the great work she did on this interior. I mean, it really catches your attention. Dan, why don't you point out some of the awesome stuff that she's incorporated on the inside? Well, we had this, we took the door apart and had this pink made and put around here and then mm -hmm. we had this pink panel. Mm -hmm. and this is embroidered. Yep. Nice. Yep. And then we, we had this made up here in the top uh -huh. and it's got lights around it at nighttime lights up. So you can't see it here in the daylight, but at night it's got a pink glow around the whole outer perimeter. Yes. You were showing it to me earlier. I mean, yeah. I bet that looks awesome. Yes, yes, that looks good. And she's added all the deals around the gauges. And... Got to have all the gauge bezels, switch trims, uh, everything you can get for the dash. That's a trucker must. And tell yeah. me about, she had the steering wheel uh, with the, the pink ribbon on it. That's cool. Yeah, she found us somewhere. Uh -huh. And... Uh -huh incorporated it with this and it was meant to be meant to be yep <laughs> we had to have that all the chrome steering column cover 
I know the floor we're going to get some pictures of here before we're done is phenomenal, as well as the upholstery on the seats. You said the seats was actually the like the latest touch yes. you had done to the interior. They're relatively new. Yep, we had them ready to go for the for the show in Louisville this right, year, and they didn't get a go. Well, you can show them at Louisville 2021. <laughs> okay, that's what we're hoping for. All right, <laughs> just tell her keep them clean. <laughs> keep them looking. I mean, this new. is this is her little touch here to put oh, this yeah. pink yep. ground of Peterville on yep. the pedals and. She's got uh, cancer ribbons on the the part knobs. Uh, yeah, and she's got yep. it up here on a shifter. And oh yeah, this is her personal deal here on the shifter, which looks good. Right, brought a little western flair inside. Yes, I like that. Yes. Yeah. Well, it really works well. You know, there's a lot of nice stuff in here, and it's not overdone. You know, it's not it's not too much of a good thing. So, hats off to her for uh, her design and eye for style. Well, once again, kudos to Miss Pam for her great job designing this truck. I mean, literally theming it somewhat for cancer awareness and spreading the word about, you know, the disease and the search for a cure. It's wonderful that she does that. It's awesome that she's a working driver hauling cattle and livestock wherever you and her decide that they need to be hauled. So I look forward to seeing you and her coming through Joplin soon. So if you're in the neighborhood, you better hit me up. Oh, we will. Okay. We will. We'll see you down there. Thank you. Thanks, uh -huh. Dan. Thank you. All right, gang, we are back streaming from Mafia headquarters here in Joplin. How about that last segment? That trip to Lincoln, Nebraska was a lot of fun. Now, like me, you know how they make those exhaust pipes up there. And Mr. Dan Radeboss stole Pam's truck for a day and got away with it. And we came down and filmed him. I had a really fun time shooting that with him. Well, you've heard me talk about we're going to have a party photo contest. So I'm going to explain it. A little bit more. We're looking for the photo of the rowdiest, most fun-loving party crowd of the night. And when you take that, just hashtag it GBATS2020 Live. Hashtag GBATS2020 Live. Get a photo of your party group tonight, and you can post it on any social media platform. Doesn't have to be just Facebook. We're going to be monitoring them all. We're going to accept photos for this competition, this viable competition, until the end of tonight's broadcast. And we'll judge these over the weekend and then Monday on the Four State Trucks Facebook page, we'll announce the winners. Let me tell you this awesome prize package we've got for the winners. So, best party crowd is gonna get one Four State Trucks hoodie, one G-Bats t-shirt, and one sporty new G-Bats 2020 hat. And it's not just for you it's for your entire party group up to 10 people that's a heck of a box of swag 10 hoodies 10 shirts 10 hats wow and i might be able to talk to ooida and get them to throw in a few hats you never know i might be able to get an ooida belt buckle some ooida suspenders who knows what kind of ooida swag we can get thrown in on this deal so Keep those pictures coming up to the end of the broadcast, but don't change the dial. We got more trucking TV up next. Hey, here's a familiar face from G Bats gone by, John Mears and the Lucas Pullen team. What's up, man? Oh man, it's just uh, another day, uh, another day in paradise, right? <laughs> it's been quite an adventure this year, you know. Uh, I I can't believe that we stayed up that late on New Year's Eve to celebrate the year the way it's went for us uh, at this point. <laughs> Hey, it's not Friday night, and we're not down here in Joplin together watching all the pulling action, but we've seen some pretty cool video tonight, and uh, you guys are a go-to for our audience. They love seeing you guys and the whole Lucas crew come down here, and uh, it won't be all too long, and we'll be, we'll be together again. Oh, absolutely. You know, I know a lot of our guys that we bring down there enjoy uh, the, the show. It's as much for them to look around and see what you've got, Look at the the show trucks and, and see what's uh, the latest on the market that Four States offers. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my highlights of the whole weekend when we do get together is you call me down there Friday night for your driver's meeting. And a lot of those dudes are there for nothing else than they wanted to come to GBATS and get out there and pull for those fans. It's not about, certainly about, you know, big prize money or even points. They're there because that's where they want to be. It, it, that, that's great. I mean... 
we get a lot of guys that say, hey, can we come in or what are we going to do this year? And that's, you know, they're already looking to see what's going to be on the docket for in 2021 when we come down there is uh-huh. who can volunteer their services already. <laughs> they all want to be a part of the show and, and hang out with you. Right on. Well, John, hey, thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. Tell Christy and everybody, hey, and we're looking forward to seeing you real soon. Oh, absolutely. You know, one thing, Brian, we want to add that Forrest Lucas was a trucker. I mean, and he uh, and dear Barry to his heart is all the people that are hauling stuff up and down the road. And that's what that's what got Lucas Oil started was the trucking industry. So it's a it's a big staple for us. I mean, an incredible uh, job that you guys do and and uh, just uh, promoting trucking. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. You guys are a big part of the success of our show. And we're just like Forrest and yourself. You know, we're all about trucking, and if we can't have a big get-together, we want to do this four-hour broadcast and give everybody some fun trucking TV that, that they would all enjoy. Absolutely. So hopefully we'll see everybody in 21, and we can't wait. Uh, it's already on the calendar, man. All right. Take care, bud. See you, see you later. All right. Take care, guys. Hey gang, Brian Martin, the boss man, coming at you from Riverdale, California, and I'm stoked to be here today. I'm here with Mike, his dad, Melvin, and Mitch of Magini Hay Hauling, and many of you know, these guys have kind of a notorious reputation out on the West Coast, <laughs> in a good way, <laughs> but really an awesome bunch, uh, big reputation for having some fine looking equipment, 
some head turning equipment, hard working, fun loving family. I've been following them for a lot of years. Used to run into you guys at the truck shows back in 05, 06, 07, but we've all kind of went different ways and had different priorities in life the last few years. Thanks for having us out here. It's awesome to come out and see you guys in person, real life. A lot of our customers back in Missouri and people watching on the East Coast, we don't get the opportunity to see your equipment. So this is a way we can take it out on the internet, let everybody see it worldwide. So I know you guys been in the hay hauling business a while. Tell us, Mike, a little bit about you know how it all started. I mean, you guys got a long reputation here of uh, uh, trucking and uh, the family, third generation. This guy started it picking up out of the field, roadsiding. Uh -huh. Just a bobtail at a time and grew to a set of doubles and <laughs> kept growing and growing and here we are. Running, oh, yeah. We're running 23 trucks at one time and running 100 to 200 loads a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just uh, all, all these two hands right here. Oh yeah. Then, then he come along and look at the mess we got now. <laughs> <laughs> and by that time, it was too late to turn back, so he had to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had them all lined up this morning. They looked awesome with the chicken lights on, all pulling out. I'm sure that wasn't all the trucks, but it made an awesome video for the folks to enjoy. I mean, kind of what's, what's Magini all about today? You guys strictly hay hauling. I see you got low beds. You're hauling equipment. You, you staying in California primarily, or? We run a little bit of Nevada, Oregon, mm -hmm. Arizona. Mm -hmm. Diversify a little bit, we run equipment. Mm -hmm. Got four trucks, mm -hmm. running uh, equipment all the time, and then the rest are hauling hay, and we got mm -hmm. one commodity truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, we run a little bit of wood chips here and there, but mm -hmm. just mainly hay and equipment. What's, uh, I got a question that's been bothering me ever since we got here. What's up with Mitch and the Kenworth? Like, did you drop him on his head when he was little? You know, you gotta have a black sheep of the family. You know, you gotta have that one, just gotta have something different, so here he is. I'm teasing, brother, they're all cool. Look at the hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's following the Magini uh, uh, style. Uh, it looks cool, it looks cool. So, uh, another thing that people have been wondering, I mean, you may not know this, but this is, this is like a, a, a question that's often asked in the circuit, like, Everybody tells me that it's not just your trucks, like your farm tractors, your lawnmowers, your wheelbarrows, your weed eaters are all yellow with green flames. Is that really true? We paint everything. <laughs> <laughs> we have barbecue pits that are painted yellow with green flames. It, it, everything is painted, striped, or something's done to it. I like it, Magini signature. Yeah. We can't leave it alone. <laughs> well, I know uh, we kind of put you on short notice that we were gonna drop in on you like this. You've got the old needle nose out. We're gonna do a walk around and then 13. Uh, tell me a little bit about that truck. This is not a recent build. This is something you did quite a while back and it's still it's, looking sharp. It started in 98 when I got it. Mm -hmm. And we built on it little by little every year. And I think mm -hmm. we finished it in about 2006. Mm -hmm. We were still running it. Yep, right on. So it's, it's, Let's go over there and uh, you can kind of show me all the particulars. Right on. All right, so this is Lucky 13, 98 model, 379 extended hood. What do we got under the hood, 3406E? Yep, 550. Yep. Mm -hmm. 13 speed? 13 speed. 13 speed, California style, single axle. You know, everything back in the Midwest is tandem. East Coast for sure is tandem. Uh, you ought to consider lowering this thing. I mean, it's riding pretty high. I was going to lower it a little bit, but I want to screw up the bumper, you know. <laughs> I know I read several articles about uh, you and the family. You've got a painter that does most of your paint? Yes. It, he, he got killed in a motorcycle accident, oh, but man. Dale Lisdahl mm -hmm. did all our paint mm -hmm. for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And you take it to him, you can tell him what you want. Mm -hmm. When you pick it up, it's whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. That's how a painter is. <laughs> But you give him free reign because it works. Yeah, because yeah. he was yeah. like family. That's, he, yeah. You just drop it off and he call you when it's done and you don't mm -hmm. know what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, this is a, his forte. That's what he yeah. did. He just yeah. did whatever he wanted. Yeah, he must have been like a dang near a full-time employee for you guys. He almost was, you know. He, yeah. Yeah. He probably did, I bet he did a hundred paint jobs mm -hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, let's walk around the truck. I mean, I'm digging the paint job. The color combination is signature for you guys. Bow tie visor, air cleaner lights. I mean, what's some of your favorite focal points that kind of you put into the truck when it went together so many years ago? Uh, just the big pipes, mm -hmm. the flames, mm -hmm. you know, and then we just started cleaning it up and lowering mm -hmm. it down and mm -hmm. just, I didn't put a whole lot of lights. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. just want to keep it clean and run it. You know, and I, I was attention to detail, just like the, the spades and the air cleaner. Oh yeah. A lot yeah. of people don't even notice uh -huh, that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, 
Every little thing has detail that to it. That makes it. And we were flipping through your scrapbook earlier. I mean, this is not a show pony. This is a working oh, truck. Oh, no. It's been stuck in the <laughs> snow, stuck in the mud, and ran off the road. Yeah. You know. And you got to figure this makeover was done over a decade ago, and it's still looking like it is. So I'd say it's, you know, up there. It's one of the prides of the fleet. Tell me a little bit about the old needle nose over here. Uh, my dad wanted an old truck, and uh, we bought this one from Boomer Bear. Uh -huh. It was a short hood. Yeah. And we wanted an extended hood, so we took the hood off, had this hood made. Uh -huh. We extended it 14 yeah. inches longer yeah. than the extended yeah. hood. So it's an extended, extended, extended yes. hood. Yes, <laughs> yes. We wanted to make it unique. Uh huh. And so we kind of did a little bit of our flavor to it. And, mm -hmm. You know, I ran it for six months mm -hmm. on the road and mm -hmm. drove it around, but good old California won't let you run it no more. So. Right, right. There's something about a needle nose Pete and a small window Peterbilt cab. <laughs> It's yeah. like the world never looked better than looking out those windshields and across that hood. No, when I sit there and drive and I see that <laughs> oh. hood out there, then I get in a regular truck, uh -huh. it doesn't seem the same no yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, where'd my hood go? It's got a gangster look and a gangster feel. Yeah. Uh, very cool truck. And now this one you're probably not running on a regular basis no. anymore. Yeah. No. Well, that's if, if like if Carbon California is listening, like, no, we, we're not running. No, we never Actually, run Actually, we're probably not running either one of these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, walking down the side of the truck, these wheels without the 10 decorative holes, what's the story on those? I don't even think those are available anymore. Nope, they're just smooth wheels. Everybody uh -huh. asks where we got them and we, you can't get them no more. They're eye catching, them. Yeah, 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 they're eye catching. Yeah, and when you extended the hood, you had to extend the cowl down here as well. Yeah, we oh, redid man. the dash. Yeah. Yeah, so the dash was all hand fabricated, I'm saying. All by hand, yeah. painted green, then we smoked it with a torch mm. and then cleared over it to get uh -huh. that smoke look. Uh huh. Check it out with the extension of the hood. You had to do some pretty radical modifications to the shifter. But as you can see from Melvin racing by at about 110 <laughs> mile an hour, it works. <laughs> it functions. It functions well. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We put power windows. I put a tunnel uh -huh. through the uh -huh. center uh -huh. and the tunnel carries through the sleeper. No kidding. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that overhead is pretty custom. Coming on back here. Really finished out nice with the deck plate airline box, tank bracket covers, new way air ride. You don't see that too often anymore. Hogue built fenders, the good stuff. Yeah. I like the way you did the, the bus lights, the cab lights everywhere. Yeah. Even on the air cleaners. Yeah, we did everything right here in our shop. Yeah. Just... Yeah. The hand pinstripes there under the window, those always work. The Godfather. That was my dad's nickname when he was young. Uh huh. They call, uh -huh. Everybody called him the Godfather. Uh huh. <laughs> so we just carried it through. You beat us to it, Riverdale Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> That's been that way for I know years. It. I know it. I know it. Man, I dig these old trucks. That vintage iron. That's kind of you and me. That's what we grew up in, riding yeah. shotgun, and uh, it, it brings back a lot of memories. Well, it, you can't get can't get past the sound of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a 400 Cummins. Mm -hmm. Just big thumping coming yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it's, it's unique you know it's, uh -huh. it's old school and you, uh -huh. you don't hear that no more all you hear is a fount the fan of a new new truck right eight inch smokers like you said stainless boxes handcuffs for when things go south in a hurry that's, right. <laughs> that's when you just when you get pulled over you just put them on yourself and stick your hands out the window <laughs> say i'm guilty you caught me <laughs> Now we got a killer stereo system in it. Oh yeah, you do. Oh show. Yeah, I like the shag. My sister put all that <laughs> shag in there. It's got character. <laughs> and it's what year again? 1962. 62. Well, it's righteous, man. Thanks for cleaning it up for this uh, little flick and uh, we really appreciate it taking the time. I know you all are busy working, you got lots of customers counting on you. So I appreciate you shutting down for a couple of days and having fun with us. Yeah, we need to get cleaned up anyways. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to get them out every Get few the months. dust yeah, off them, get yeah. the smoke ashes <laughs> off them. All right, old 98 here. What do you say we start with, uh, we'll pop the hood and we'll kind of look at the engine. You guys did this years ago and you were the trendsetters. I mean, the old school pinstripes, fully flamed out on the underside of the hood, just like the top side. Like, we didn't just stop at the outside. We brought it under here, and a lot of cool touches 
on and around the engine. Why don't you point some of those out for us? Well, there's a lot of them. I, I put all stainless bolts yep. through the engine uh -huh. and the frame. Uh -huh. And a lot of laser work. Uh -huh. I got the good times yeah. in here. The yeah. fans painted, fans painted, both sides. Uh -huh. And uh, steel braided lines just here and there. It's just I worked on it every weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it shows. That, this was my baby. So uh -huh. every every weekend, uh -huh. the family's out here, and we're working on Me and my dad used to work on this. We buy, we get something new. Uh -huh. We'd be working on it on Saturday or Sunday, yeah. and my mom bring us lunch, uh -huh. a 12-pack, <laughs> and we that's what we did in the shop. We just worked on this truck, and this, you know, a little bit of elbow grease, and yep. 10 years down the road, this is what we got. I'm kind of thinking... When you guys got something and it was stock, you never like put it to work in that fashion. You always had to tweak it. <laughs> this truck sat in the shop for two weeks before I ever seen a load. Yeah, yeah. We bought it brand new, Uh huh. put it in the shop. We done tore the suspension out of it Uh huh. and a few other things that the painter out there, uh -huh. everything was getting done at one time. And then two weeks later, mm -hmm. it finally got to pull the load mm -hmm. after it was brand new. <laughs> a lot of chrome work under here. This is all polished out, your intake tee. Chrome column, chrome steering box, definitely not an everyday thing uh, for most of us. Uh, the fact you painted the fan blade on both sides of the blade, that's killer, man. That's cool. Now, you don't have a flip kit because they weren't available 10 nope. years ago, uh, but you did put a, uh, airbags on the front, and this doesn't look like anything I've seen. This is kind of a factory setup on certain peeps, but was it factory on this one? Nope. Yeah. They come out of a salvage yard? It, yes. Mm -hmm. We, a matter of fact, all the pieces we f we finally found one, mm -hmm. and then we were missing one piece. We had to make one. I see. To make this kit work, uh -huh. and then we changed the bags to get it to drop. Uh -huh. But it's a factory peat air ride from the 70s. Yeah. And then we modified it to go lower. Right. And uh, you don't see them no more. No, no, they weren't real popular, but you guys have made it work for uh, old number 13 here. What's up uh, on the West Coast with the 255 series tires? Like, is that just a personal appearance thing or do you have some advantage? If we're hauling hay, when we're hauling double edge uh -huh. or eight one edge, yeah. it's taller. So with the 255s, get you an inch and a half. Bring your trailer down. Yes. Yeah, okay. So the lower you are, the taller you can go with hay. So when you're hauling lightweight bales, you, you get paid by the bale. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. want to put as many as you can there on. You so the, the 255s, it is an appearance thing. Yeah. But also, it helps you get more bales on to right. make you know more buck per load. Yep. So strapless breathers, as you said, the spades and the screens, very cool. Tell me what we got down here. I, I glanced at that and I thought it was a cab light you'd shave, but these are totally one-off. Yeah, these are, this is a stainless pipe. Uh-huh. We sliced it and diced it uh -huh. to get the right angle and yep. mount them there. This, I've never seen a set like it. That's, you won't either. <laughs> you got strapless air tanks. That's yeah. something you don't see very often either. Yeah. yeah, and then we got a Magini cut in right here so you can see the Magini oh. on the bottom with a light. Add to the bone, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Let's go on around uh, towards the back end here again. Got the bringing the spade accent all the way back here to the fuel tanks with your shutoffs. Yeah. Very cool. I like the freehand stripe down the frame. It's a nice touch. We got extra, I got extra plugs. Because uh -huh. when I built this truck, uh -huh. they didn't have LEDs. Uh -huh. So when you're running 300 lights with no LEDs, <laughs> you can't run them off <laughs> on one, one plug cord, because yeah. they would melt. <laughs> so we put extra plugs. Now with the LEDs, I could do away with them, exactly. but they're already here. So. Yeah. Pimping ain't easy. It's a Magini slogan from way back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, let's look over the inside here. You know, we were looking at the truck before we started filming, and one of the cheap, cool, simple tricks you guys pulled off uh, well, the padded floorboard. Man, it's so easy, so unique. Well, everybody's wanting to you know, put wood, which is kind of outdated, or stainless, or a painted floor. I gotta tell you, I really like this, and it's probably the fastest, lowest cost option of everything. It was carpet before, then, like you said, everybody had yeah. wood. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of wood. Right, right. So if you see in this inside this truck, there's not a one piece of wood. Yeah, I've gone. either painted it, uh -huh. turned it to chrome, uh -huh. or leather. Uh -huh. And so I want to do something different. So uh -huh. we just we put leather, and it's uh -huh. it's pretty comfortable. Yeah. The short uh, shift stick's pretty racy, hot rod looking. Yeah. That works well. Console uh, with your big sound system, your big woof. Yeah, we're running about 3,500 watts with 112. Uh-huh. 
and I got five TVs. Uh, <laughs> even in the door, so if yeah. you're hanging yeah. out at the show, or uh -huh. you can sit there and watch TV. Right on. I put one piece windows before they came out with one piece windows. Yeah, like you had to fabricate all that. Yeah, yeah, and nothing's cooler. I mean, you had quite the reputation for this the first couple of years you showed it. The power open close back window, man, yeah. that is a mega cool idea. It's on air just like the side windows. Yeah, it rolls up and down. Fantastic. Low base seats. Love the painted dash, all pinstriped out to match. Love the way the seats, upholstery, floorboard, all the, the flames stitched in them, man, that come out cool. Coming on around to this side of the engine, I mean, you got the firewall cover with the same lights that you got under the bunk, that's very cool. Now, this thing was probably born a 475, but you guys have had it tuned to a 550, maybe yes. more. Maybe, maybe a little maybe bit more. more. <laughs> it's a monster. And then all the filters. Mm -hmm our stainless filters uh -huh. all the way around. And I put a 275 watt uh, alternator on it. To power all your lights you had back then. Back then, yeah. now you don't yeah. need it now. Now you can run an 80 amp, <laughs> <laughs> this day and age. Well, man, it's well done. You've got everything just as it should be. I wouldn't change a thing on old 13. I'd leave it just the way it is. It's, uh, it's classic. People have read about it several times, you know, in different magazines, especially 10.4, uh, being a West Coast magazine. But it's cool to get out here and see it again. We probably haven't seen each other since, gosh, 06, 07. Yeah. Something like that. Either so, Vegas or Reno. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. I appreciate the invite. I got to ask, it looks like the rear tires are kind of juiced up. Like uh, maybe they could break traction if a guy was a little heavy right footed. They, they, it's possible. It's possible. We could probably make that happen. <laughs> Let's go back here and uh, put the wheels in motion here, as they say. I gotta tell you, Mike, you've made this trip a lot of fun. I love featuring cool trucks, but even more so, I love featuring cool people, a hardworking family that's dedicated to trucking. You guys have left your mark on California trucking, and in a good way. I mean, I, your name comes up in a lot of conversation, it's always good. That's a testament to you, your dad, your uncle. Thanks for having us out, man. It has been a Thanks walk. for coming, it's you been, bet. been fun. All right, we'll do it again sometime. You got it. <laughs> Hey y'all, we're back. We're live here in Four State Trucks. How about that last segment? Man, that trip out to Magini filming that was so much fun. It was like a family reunion. They really rolled out the hospitality. Let me ask you this. Who does a burnout in their show truck? Huh? Mike Magini does. I've got a real strong feeling that the party of the night is probably out there in Riverdale, California. So, Mike, Mitch, gang, if I don't see you hashtagging a picture, I'm gonna lose all respect, man. I know you guys got it going on. Moving on, you know what I said would happen when this comes back out, game over. If you know how many times tonight we said the words OIDA or OOIDA total in the broadcast, send it in right now. The first one with the correct answer is gonna get a thousand dollar Visa card, largely thanks to OIDA and this man right here. Come on in, Louie. Hey, thanks for having me, Brian. Great to see you, my you friend. Bet, man. We are. We've been having fun all day, but we've been having a blast tonight. Yeah, it's been a great time down here. This is a great show. I mean, 
you have blown this virtual truck there out of the water, my friend. It's well, great. we just look at it as if we were on the other side of that camera. What would we want to see in cool truck in action? And that's what we tried to put together. And that's what it's been. It's been complete entertainment. I have been blessed to be here with Brian and his brother Bryce in the shop. And we got trucks out here. We got people having watch parties out <laughs> in the parking lot. It doesn't get any better it's than this. It's good stuff, man. We've been running around together at GBATS for the last four or five years with OIDA. We think it's a great partnership. I mean, we're both, OIDA and us, we're all about trucks, trucking, the whole industry, but especially the owner-operator. I mean, that's our guys we want to take care of and cater to. And yes. that's what we're doing tonight. Yes, and it's been a great partnership. We love it. You know, I wasn't at the first two shows when we were partner. came in here in 18. It's been great. And, you know, OIK, we love trucks. I love trucks. Like I said, this has been a fantastic night. It's been great to get out of the office. Got to talk to some truckers all day. Got to talk truck talk, work, man, and stuff like that. It's been a fantastic day. I'm telling you, just about any given day of the week here at Four State Trucks, there's a truck show of sorts out on that parking lot. And it was a truck show today, <laughs> buddy. Right. I, I was sitting there as a fellow here from Canada had a big fancy freight liner. With a big stretch trailer, all fancy, yeah. all kinds of cool trucks in and out of here, great people to talk to, awesome. That may be the ninth inning here for the GBATS live stream, but we still got a lot of high action. Starting right now, are you ready to give away a $1,000 Visa card? Well, yeah, let's do it. Bring us the answer. All right, Amber Estes, you're $1,000 richer. 24 was the count. 24 times tonight we said, oh, Ida. Good stuff. Congratulations, Amber. That was a good time. Now, how this whole thing started tonight with the $20,000, uh, the, the prize package formerly known as $20,000, <laughs> is I got with you guys earlier and I said, hey, man, 2020 has been rough on truckers. Let's just do a cash prize. Guys can spend it on whatever they might need for their truck. So I brought that up to you guys, and then you gave me your feedback. Tell us what happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you talked to Rod. Yes. Up yes. at the office. Yes. Rod's kind of tight. Rod come and talk to us. Really? Yeah, we changed our mind. I said, Let's, it's been a tough year. It's been yeah. rough. Let's throw a little more in. Let's put in 15. I'm glad you're so persuasive yes. up there, man. <laughs> well, hey, the price package at that point, when you challenged me to do the same, Four State Trucks said, if you guys are in for 15, we're in for 15. So that brought us up to a $30,000 price package, which is very legit. Can you imagine what you can do to the outside or inside of your truck? for that matter, with 30 grand. Well, I spent my day here all day looking at all this shiny stuff. I think I need to go buy a truck and <laughs> try to win 30000 because I can spend it pretty quick, but you can get some really nice, cool stuff here. Starting with some half-off horns. Oh, yeah, and a whole <laughs> lot more tonight. Well, we have the winning entry in this envelope right now. So we are this close, you and me, to knowing who is going to win this $30,000 gift card at four state trucks. So and if this winner happens to be an Ohio member, that money goes a little bit farther. <laughs> it stretches here. a little further. That's <laughs> it. So let's open this up and see if we can give ourselves a clue. Oh, let's try to figure out how to open the envelope. <laughs> All right, oh, we have a there. winner. We do have a winner. Where's he from? He's from the great state of Colorado. All right, gang. Well, we're going to go to one more break. We're going to try to get this lucky trucker on the phone. Hopefully he is home and will answer, and with any kind of luck, we can get him on face back when we come back from this message. So sit tight. Somebody is going to win 30 grand in about five minutes. Okay, this is it. Thank you to each one of you that sent in pictures of you and your family in front of your truck, gave us your awesome comments, but we're down to the final round. Here's your last five calendar trucks for the 2021 calendar. Next up is C.J. Donovan out of Pennsylvania with his very calendar-worthy cab over Peterbilt Model 362. CJ likes the sales crew and the huge stock of parts that Four State has available. Then we go to the Brian Wernicke family from right here in Missouri. They've got the black Peterbilt Model 389 with the 70-inch stand-up sleeper. The Wernickes like the convenient location and wide variety of parts. How about Jay Thomas Nettling out of Pennsylvania? He's got the retro orange W900A model Kenworth. Pretty much a shoe-in for October, aren't you, Jay Thomas? <laughs> Jay Thomas likes the big selection and fast shipping that he gets from four-state trucks. 
Take a look at the James Nixon family. From Texas, he's got his cattle haul in Peterbilt 379. James says he had always heard good things about Four State, and ever since he started shopping here, he really likes the crew and the large selection the most. The final calendar spot is going to go to the Brayan Sanchez family from Illinois. Check out their really well-done stand-up Peterbilt that you're seeing now. He likes the fact that Four State has everything he needs to make and keep his truck looking great. So there's your final calendar trucks. Congratulations to each and every one of them. We really appreciate you taking time to snap a picture with you and some of your family in front of the truck. Congratulations and look for your truck on the 2021 Chrome Shop Mafia calendar. All right, and we're back here to announce the winner. The winner. $30,000 gift card. Thanks to OOIDA and Four State Trucks. Our winner, as you mentioned, is from the great state of Colorado, from the city of Sterling, Brandon Rhodes. Brandon, you out there, bud? We'll let him get patched in here. Brandon, can you hear me, man? <laughs> He's speechless. That's what it is. He is so happy and so excited. He is speechless. And why wouldn't he be? Oh, man. <laughs>
we couldn't do things like this. So from all of us here at Four State Trucks and all of us over at OOIDA, we'll see you next time. We're just doing it on a live stream, but... I'm, I'm going to stop you, Brian. Man, I was on a roll, dude! <laughs> I, I know, I know. So, so, since the microphone is, like, on you... Don't yell. Yeah, you don't have to project as much. Man, I'm bad about that. I'm bad yeah, about that's, that. That's good. That's good delivery. So I've actually yeah. seen pallets on their side intact with mm -hmm, the shrink wrap mm -hmm, on it. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> We're still filming, aren't we? Was it or was it not you that come by here at about 90 and 100 mile an hour earlier? Uh, I'm gonna admit, cop, sir, officer, <laughs> I was me. <laughs> well, we've got issues, and I'm gonna have to write you up and pull you off the road because you didn't do your pre-trip this morning. You know what? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we thought the boys covered this for you, didn't I thought we? they did too, so I, I gotta quit jumping on them now. <laughs> We'll pass the buck on downstream, but yeah, I seen that tire there this morning. I said, we got to get Melvin in on this. You know what? That's a shame. <laughs> ah, it works. Well, at least, at least, you know, it's still on the rim. Right, right. That's an advantage of running them short sidewalls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll do a hundred mile an hour with no air. There you go. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not only for your big class A trucks, is that your mom calling? Matter of fact, it is. <laughs> I'll call her back. Tech two. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, let me mute that fiber. Cell phone's off on the set. Cell phone's off on the set. Probably in trouble. Jill. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine goes off. Lamp. Right face. Right face. Okay. So, yeah, you're just. Mad. You're bomb. You're bomb. Okay, so we're just going to say. They're watching live right now. Okay, so you set up straight. You're done playing with the truck. Okay, hold on. Well, they're watching live right now. Let's tear down! Your voice just doesn't carry. No. Speaking voice. Okay. That's mine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm short right here to microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say it at the same time? Okay, we can. Do you want to? Okay. You do it. Thanks for, Thanks for tuning, tuning in. in, and we'll see you next year for, for the, the biggest, biggest and the bestest show, show ever. ever. <laughs> one more time. Okay. We got to get it together. Say one line and one yeah. Have to yeah, say yeah, we're not okay. gonna be able to do it together. Yeah, no. And then you improv from there. Do you, you, you want me to? I'm trying to plan this out because if not, it's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back here for an hour and a half. <laughs> We're still here at 3.30. Oh, yeah. 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 I think we're talking about science <laughs> work or something right now. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Where did I start off with? The, okay, hope you've... All right. You actually talk to us. Like, uh -huh. you could kind of turn and talk to us. Like, hey, are you guys enjoying the show, the live stream show this year? Uh-huh. Oh, you really? Yeah. Because you guys are going to be there? Sure. I will be. <laughs> oh, yeah, because this isn't happening now. <laughs> <laughs> something super cool because we don't know what it is <laughs> don't worry about anything anything can be edited yeah, i cuss on these things all <laughs> usually and we still make yeah, you look good yeah you gotta work we still make it. you look like a saint <laughs> so at that point i always just look at it and say yeah just i always talk like you normally would okay you ready Oh, perfect! <laughs> Let it be known that as part of being a good neighbor, I'm helping pack up the big rig chrome shop order so it gets out on time. <laughs> Friday night, September 25th. <laughs> I should have put that ad on indeed for a cameraman. I'm ready, I just gotta think of something. Okay. <laughs> See, we don't have no scripts. Yeah. We don't have no scripts like the big timers. Oh. Okay.